close the doors of your mind from all carnal will or carnal thought, all emotions, all desires, all fears, all laziness, all doubt, anything in the center of your mind that does not allow your body, your thoughts, and your mind, your left and your right brain, your frontal lobe, your, your consciousness, your, your 12 cranial nerves, your hands and your feet, your stomach, anything in your body that does not allow your, allow your mind to come to balance that tries to distract you from who you are. He says, is it not written in your Torah? I said, you are Allahim. And if I called you an Allahim, whom the word of you who came, if you have it on the inside of you, then you can't change it. For all that immersed into Yahushua have put him on. And if you've been immersed into Yahushua Mashiach, you put him on. You no longer walk after your own ways and your own thoughts and your own desires. And then Shaul said, though I be want to do good, evil is always present. It's always there to want to bring you in and bring you back to the, the person, your old person you used to be. But yet, through his knowledge of Yahushua Mashiach, we can now advance forward and forget those things which are behind and levitate and move and vibrate to those things which are the higher calling of Yahushua Mashiach. For this Yom, we acknowledge the one who made all the heart of the earth and the heart of the earth, the rivers and the streams that serve him, and all the animals and creatures and the seasons and the Shemesh Kukri and the Yark that serve him, that give light to the, on, on the earth for us human beings. But there is a light that extends even further than that light. Those, that light was on the fourth day. And that's Yahushua Mashiach who was on, existed on the fourth day. Or above the fourth day, on the first day of creation, when he sent his bin from the highest Shamayim to give light to the earth. Not only outside of man, but on the inside of man. That we may light be lit and be a light to the world. To, the, to the, all of the other Allahims of the world. So this Yom, we stand as palm trees. We stand as palm trees, bring out the living water, and we stand and we don't bend and we don't break in the storms. And we bend and break in the storms, what good is a palm tree if it bends and break? You won't even be no stronger than Deborah. We stood under the palm tree, gave judgment to Yashua. But you won't be, under, be like Nathaniel under the palm tree, under the brooks, even as you rested under the tree. Knowing that we, you know that Yahushua Mashiach even told us, he said, he that believes on me as the scripture said, I was belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he shall, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Have you ever seen a tree planted by a river? It has, a, I can say, a lot of vegetation. And we said it bears its fruit in its season. So as we move forward, we move forward in kindness, a hob, joy, peace, patience, meekness, temperance, samuna. We move forward in compassion and mercy. And as Yahushua, Yahuwah extended compassion and mercy, and he cast us out of the land of, your, of, of our native lands, even as he cast Adam out of the gun, even as he cast Cain out. He all gave us all compassion and mercy. But most of all, we move forward in a hob and love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So this is ODE Shaluma, ODE 34, 1 through 6. There's no hard way where there is a simple heart and no barrier for upright thoughts. So if your mind is fogged, like they say, if your mind, your consciousness is fogged, then that means you need to bring your mind and they say to upright thoughts. Right? Because most of the time when we go to our lower self, our upright thoughts leave and we have many barriers in our heart and our mind. Verse 2 says, No whirlwind, it says, nor whirlwind in the depth of enlightened thoughts. When your mind mind is mindset is enlightened within, your mindset is you're not sowing to the wind, you're not reaping a whirlwind, then guess what happens? You have enlightened thought. You understand that I, I have little margin of error in my life to where I can prosper and be the person I need to be. Verse three says, where one, he says, he says where is enlightened thought? Verse three says, where one is surrounded entirely by a pleasing country, there is nothing divided in him. So we look at a pleasing country. Like most people don't never even go in a pleasing country. They live in cities their whole life, or they live in a, in a two, three streets, and that's where they, they extend and they experience all their violence. But he talked about pleasing country. He said, well, there's pleasing country. There's nothing divided. He said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack. He making me lie down in green pastures. It's pleasing country. Leave me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Restores it. Right? This verse 4 says, the likeness of what? Of that which is below is that which is above. So we look at, as in Shamaim, so on earth. So if you want to be earth and below, he said, it's just like that above. But he said, as above, so below. For there is, no, for everything is from above. From below, there is nothing. So we look at everything 
that you see is from above, not on things on the earth. But things on the earth are going to perish. He said, but everything is from above. It's from an unseen world, an unseen force, an unseen core, an unseen bina kukma da'ad, an unseen wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Verse four, it says, but it is considered to be by those in whom there is no understanding, right? Just when people have no understanding, they'll think that the people on the earth made everything, on the, made everything above. And everything above made everything below. It's just like a waterfall that falls down. If the, if the water don't fall down, if the rain and snow don't come, nothing, nothing, a vibration and sound don't come, a word don't come, a debar don't come, then nothing forms. Verse six says, Khan has been revealed for your salvation. Right, so we look at a Khan. I say, an indefinite period of time. I've extended to you a non-penalty for what you have done. He says, Khan has been revealed to you, revealed for your salvation. Believe, live, and be saved. Right, so this is the Exodus, Shemuth, Exodus 12, 14 through 15. This day shall be for you a memorial, a day. Ye shall keep it as a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations. The word for generations is door in this verse. As a statute forever, you shall keep it, it as a kagog. And we know it's moving, kagog is moving in procession, moving in a circle, right, in a sequence. For seven days you shall eat leavened bread. So we started that. On the first day, you shall remove leaven, a soor, out of your house. We should have got all the leaven out. And if some leaven start to rise up in you, then you understand, like I said, it has to be cast down. Just like you who should say, casting down every imagination and thought. That tried, to rock, that, that tried to exalt itself against the knowledge of Yahuwah. That's all it's trying to do. It's trying to exalt itself. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be laziness, hatred, jealousy, envy, strife, uh, lust, complaining, criticism, pride, sexual desires. All these are a part of what? Eleven. Right? That are trying to rise up in you because you're supposed to put these things away. He said seven. All these are a part of it. Why? Because he said this day is supposed to be kudash to you. You say, why? Because it's important to understand why when you're approaching Yahuwah and when you're coming towards him, you have to be in a certain state of mind. And he's just trying to get, keep people in a state of mind. Right? For if anyone eats what is leavened or kamats from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Yasharal, right? So the first day, the seventh day, this is the fourth day. We're in the fourth day of it. Right? So how much leaven has been rising up? Right? What, what has me? What has me appearing in your life that you recognize that shouldn't be there? That's how you know what to get rid of. See, when you're in a restricted type of way and you're in a restricted type of walk, then you have to recognize what's rising up and what's rising up. But that's what you have to write down. Like, oh, this is something that I need to get rid of. Why? Because there's leaven in the house, and that's how you have to. That's how you have to look at everything in your life. That's how you have to look at everything in your life. You have to analyze yourself like that, right? Not saying that sexual desires and all these things, if you're married, are wrong. It's more based upon how you say what is one putting before you, right? All these are important. Right? So this is we say these are the generations. He said you should do this throughout your generations. As you were for generations, a door. Yeah, door. D. Dalif u Rosh in some, and you have door, right? You have door in the other ones is Dalif and Rosh. But it means a period, a generation, a habitation. So we look at generations. We look at generations that happen. It also says what? Living during a period, a dwelling place. It says, Brown Driver's Bridge says, properly a revolution of time. So we look at a revolution of time in your generation. So we look at a full, after a full 364 day cycle, this cog is kept in the first month, right? And we have to do it in this generation after a revolution of time. And we got to do it in our habitations, in our dwelling places, where we go, where we sit in the house, walk by the way, we lie on and rise up. We've got to do it every single day. This is a period. It's a revolution of time. Like the sun goes up at 180 degrees, and then it gets to 90 degrees, and it goes back down. It has to go a full revolution, and then it comes back around again. A revolution of time. So you look at every single day as a revolution of time. It goes around, the sun rises, evening, morning, evening, evening, morning, evening. That's another revolution of time for you to have no leaven in your house. Or has to mean no sin in your life. Right? So this is Psalm Talim 23, 1 through 6. This is 
everybody's favorite scripture right? in, some, in some places of the world. But it says right here, Tiling 23, 1 through 6, Yahuwah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me lie down in green pastures. Right? You look at green pastures, look at the third day of creation. Right? We look, we're on the fourth day. Think about the th third day of creation. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Right? You think about still waters. Think, think about all the water that was created when he separated the sea, this, the water above and below. Right? He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. So why would a father and mother lead their children in, in the path of righteousness It'd be leading it for their namesake so they can have something to pass down to their children so their name will be remembered as they keep going. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. they destroy for lack of knowledge. Therefore, you rejected knowledge. He said, if you're not cool, my daughter, I will also reject you from being kahan to me and I'm going to forget your children. Because why? Because if you reject it and you don't walk in it, then guess what happens? Then your children get rejected. It says, verse 4, because remember, if you're who is your shepherd, that means you're like animals. And if you're like animals, when you're is comparing you to, animals have children. Right? Verse 4 says, even though I walk, Yalak, through the valley, or Gaya, Gay, of the shadow of death, I fear no rock. I feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So you look at all the, the attributes of a shepherd, a master shepherd. He said, they rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Right? You look at all that. You look see when the woman came in and anointed Yahushua with the alabaster box. And he what? Poured it on his head. Right? But it says right here. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He said goodness and mercy are going to follow him all the days of his life. So you look at all the, all the sheep, all the, the, the things that he's pasturing going to follow him. He said goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. He said those type, those type things are going to follow you. And I shall dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. So of course, if you, got, if you have these goodness and mercy, of course you're going to dwell in his, Yahuwah's house. Because he said what type of person, why would you want hatred and envy in your life? Why would you want hatred and envy following you into your house of your Why would you want lying and slander to follow you into the house of your Why would you want gossip and lying and fornication and adultery following you to the house of your You ain't going to get in there. Right? But it says right here, Yahuwah is my shepherd, right? It says Yahuwah is my shepherd. Notice it says want. And when, you say, when you say shepherd, that's, it doesn't say want. It only has one shepherd. Right? It means what? Raha, to pasture. Right? The word Raha for that word shepherd. And it means to pasture, to tend, to graze, to feed, to tend. Ruler, teacher. It also means what? It says cows and sheep. It also means an idolater, because you can have an idolater shepherd, as we're going to talk about. Shepherd, shepherdesses. It also means shepherd and shepherdess. Why? Why would you say shepherdess? Because Rakal was a shepherdess. Right? Zilpo was a shepherdess, right? All this is a part of it. Recall was a shepherdess. To be a friend. Huh? To be a friend. All these are a part of it. To graze, to rule. Notice how all these things attributes of a ra'a. But you have shepherd, shepherdess, rule, graze. Right? It means also cultivate. But it says right here, you and he says, Yahuwah is my shepherd, I shall not want. That word for not want is kasher. It means what? To lack, be without, or decrease, to lack, to fail, to want, to be abated, to decrease. He said, You're, he said, you who is my shepherd, I shall not decrease, or be without, or lack, or be abated, or just decrease. He said, you're not going to do that if you who is your shepherd. He said, lack, fail. The only thing Yahuwah, when you who is your shepherd, it's like fruitful and multiply. Right? He says, He maketh me lie down. The word for lie down is robots. He maketh me lie and stretch out. He, he maketh me fall down. He maketh me recline, repose, lurk. He maketh me stretch oneself out to lie down, to lay down, to lay out. 
He's like, he, that's what he make me to do. Where he make you to lay all that? In the green pastures. That word for green pastures is na'ah. It means a meadow, a home, a pasture, pasture grounds. He said, who is my shepherd? He makes me lie down in pasture grounds. He makes me go to these places, right? He leads me by side the still waters. He restores my soul, right? That's what he makes me do. He makes me lie on the green pastures, right? So you look at, you look at animals, right? That's an ox. Where he at? In the green. He, he laying down in the green pastures, right? And he said, it's a black lamb, right? He in the green, chilling in the green pastures, right? This is a what? Right, another lamb in the green pastures. He said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. Just like how you have natural shepherds, Yahuwah is like, Yahuwah is my shepherd. Why? Because when you have animals, they follow you where you go. And wherever you go, that's where the animals follow you. He said, Yahuwah, wherever Yahuwah go, I go. That's what he's saying. Wherever Yahuwah goes, I go. Right, you got green pastures. Right, a beautiful greenery. Right, imagine seeing that every day. He said, man, you're gonna be thinking about no sin. Right? I right, look at this lamb, upside down, chilling, like laid out, hand and feet up. Right? Laid out. But he said, Yahoo is my shepherd. I have no lack. Right? He makes amazing you're gonna have no lack with Yahoo with Yahuwah, because he he can make green pasture come out of nowhere, just like he did in the beginning. Let every herb you only see be for food, and let the trees you only see within the cell. He did it on the third day. You ain't gonna never lack with nothing with Yahuwah. He could just speak words, and these things come to be. He said, they come to be, right? He says what? He says, he makes me lie on the green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. That word for leads is not all. He, to, to lead, to give rest. A place of rest, to lead. To cause the rest. He leads me. Not all. He's, he says what? It says run with a sparkle. Right? He said he, may, he protects me. He sustains me. He leads me. He said Yahuwah is your shepherd. He said he leads me. Right? The, the word for he, said, he makes me, he leads me beside the still waters that were for still. It's Mayo Ka. He leads me to a resting, but he says he lead me beside resting places. You know how you're driving down the road and you got a rest stop? <laughs> well, he said I, I lead, he leads me to resting places. What today is? Today is a day of rest. It's Shabbat, right? So therefore, he's leading you to a resting place. He's lead me beside still waters. He make you be still waters. He said resting place. It means peacefully. Peacefully, repose, quiet, rest. It also means matrimony. Specifically, matrimony. But he said peace, shalom, quiet, abode, still, quiet, still water, still, quiet. You ever seen still waters? You, you can't see that by the ocean. It's, it's always making noise. But if you go by a, a, a lake that's in the middle of mountains, what happens? It's still waters. He said it's peaceful. You get what he says? He lead me beside still waters. That word for, of course, you know, waters is mine. Still waters. Lead me beside still waters. Right? For what? Refreshments. Right? When you talk about this right here, urine and all that we're talking about water juice you ever seen juice that come out of fruits juice that you got water and juice i say all of that say so he lead me beside still waters that word for and it says he restores that word for restores is shub it says he restores my soul no he turns back my soul from he turns back my soul from doing something I shouldn't do to return back. He turns me back to spiritual relations. 
Yahuwah turns us back to spiritual relations, to human relations. He restores us. He refreshes us. He leads the way back. Right? If, if you get away, he leads you back. He restores your soul. He's leading you back to what? He, re he restores your nefash. He leads back your soul. He leads you back. And what do we see this word nefesh at? He said man became a living soul in the beginning. In the beginning he said what? He breathed into his nostrils and man and Adam became a living nefesh, a soul. Yahuwah, if Yahuwah is your shepherd, he's going to lead you back that you can have life to a living soul just like it was in the beginning. Right? He's leading you back. Substance of beginning. Substance of being. Your appetite. You're in the flesh. Can we say he leads you by the still water? He gives you food. It says living life. Living creature. He said I'm, I'm bringing you back to how I was in, I'm bringing you back to the beginning. I'm restoring you back. If who is your shepherd, he's going to restore you back to the beginning. Why? Why is he trying to bring you back to the beginning? Because that's when Yahuwah was their shepherd. That's when he was your shepherd. And he says what? He says, even though I yalak, or you know, walk, but it says through the valley, because <laughs> you know this word right here is used in a contextual way in this world. Gay. Gay. He said, he lead me through the valley of the shadow of death. What do you mean valley? You see this, of course we see the same word when they fought in the Valley of Salt. Just like when Dao fought in the Valley of Salt, or in Kelamere, when they fought in the Valley of Salt. That word for valley is gay. It's just a gorge, a valley. He le the yea, though I walk through the Valley of the Shadow of Death, right, because these are places where when you say Shadow of Death, the Valley of the Shadow of Death, that's what you're talking about. You're talking about a gorge, or like a place where you can die. Right, because remember when you're when a shepherd, how you say, is leading, when you who is leading, you may come to an area where you have, might have danger or a valley, something that something that somewhere something can happen to you. He said, "The valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil." Right, that word for walk is yalak. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of uh, walk through gate. He says to go and walk and come, and he say a manner of life. That's all a walk is, a manner of life. Even though my manner of life, and I walk through valleys and gorges of the shadow of death, he said, I will fear no evil, right? So he says, he says, I will fear no evil. And he says right here, for you are with me. So that word for with is imad. You are with me in mind it also means you are in me in me you are mine right he said you are upon me and guess what your shepherd can be against you too i would say yahuwah can be against you too depends but he said you are with me so even if he's with you he can be against you, and he, you can, he could be still be with you, and he could be against you at the same time. He said, how are you going to know he's against you when he starts doing things to you, disciplining you? But all this is important. But he's saying, Yahuwah is trying to restore your nefash back. Right? That's what he does. He said, he said when Yahuwah is your shepherd, he says, your rod and your staff, because we know rod and staff, he said, they comfort me. What comfort means? He said, your rod and your staff comfort me. It makes me be to be sorry. That's what the rod and staff do. He said, it makes me to be sorry, to console and to make me repent, to regret. Because you if you ever took care of animals, animals do eat animals do things that they know are wrong. Just like human beings do things they know they are wrong. Like you have a dog, I had a dog, dog know not to chew on the corner of on the chew on the corner of your baseboards or know how to know not to use the bathroom in your house or to do things outside and tear up your yard. And you come outside and look at you with a crazy look like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. 
right? Most of the time they'd be thinking, okay, he finna either put me in a pen, he finna beat me on the side, he finna do something to, show, to try to make me get back in line. Right, that's the same thing you who does. Just like you have a lamb that run out or a cow, a cow that run out or, or something escape, you start terrorizing the neighborhood and you gotta go get it and hurry up and go get it. Right, it's the same thing. He said he makes, he comforts me. He makes me be comforted after he makes me repent. He consoles me and he have compassion on me, just like he did Cain. After he murdered his brother, he comforts me. He said, sigh, to breathe in, just like he did Adam. Breathe strongly. He has pity. He said, he said comfort is changing your mind too as well but right, he says he said I will dwell in the house of Yahuwah because you know a house is a place where people live he said I'm going to dwell in his habitation because we just talked about goodness and mercy going to follow him he said goodness and mercy going to follow him right he said I'm going to dwell in the house of Yahuwah how are you going to dwell in the house of Yahuwah how are you going to dwell in his temple you got to have goodness you got to do good when was everything good when everybody was doing good in the beginning he said, I'm going to restore your nafash. I'm going to turn back your nafash back to what? To the beginning. And guess what? Goodness and mercy are going to follow this shepherd. He said, you got to be pleasant, good, agreeable, happy, prosperous. Surely these things are going to mercy follow me. Pleasant, good understanding, intellectual nature. He said, man, these people, these things are, these these animals are good. He said, good, goodness and mercy are going to follow me. Good thing, good men and women, right here. He said, good men and women. Good, good men. Kindness. Kind, intelligent people. Intelligence. You who, should, you who would want intelligent people to follow him? What did it say right here? Handsome. He want beautiful people to follow him. Good things. Pleasant. So if you're a beautiful person and you like you who are leading you, then guess what? He likes you too. Pleasant, agreeable, good, goodness, good thing. He like a good thing. Or he said he that find a shot find a good thing and get favor from your who? From another man, from her father, from your father, from your neighbor. No, you get favor from your who. He like good thing. He said goodness and mercy. Is what? He said, goodness and mercy going to follow me. He said, mercy going to follow your, your hood. And you're going to be in his house. So you see the type of people he want in his house? Beautiful, kind, intelligent, loving, caring, full of kindness. That's concede for mercy. Faithful, goodness, and kind people. Shame. He says what? It also says right here, shame. Only reason it says shame because mercy is extended to those who are reproached and shamed. Right? Just like it says kindness. He said, man, they're the kind, the, the kind ones. He like the kind people are gonna follow me. The intellectual, beautiful, good men and women are gonna follow me. Right? He said, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. He said, I'm gonna dwell. But he said that word for follow is Radah. These type of people are going to be behind, to follow after me, to pursue. It also says, these, same, these people will persecute me. Run after, to persecute. It also means to put to, put to flight. Right? Because you know how human beings are. Because we all have, people saying, an inward man, we all have a part of ourselves that has jealousy and envy. And that jealousy and envy, even though one can be all have all these attributes, can cause one to persecute and put someone to flight. But also, but you see right here, it says run after. He said, you're gonna run after me. He said, I'm gonna dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. Right? So he said, he came to turn back. He said, Yahuwah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me lie on the green paths, leave me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He returns my soul back. He re he restores my soul back. He breathes in me and gives me life back, gives my life back, and turns me back. 
and he get, makes me a living in the fosh, just like it was in the beginning when he made Adam. It says, Miss Masley, Proverbs 3, 1 through 12, my, my son. And he said, my son, talking about Adam, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years, and shalom will be added to you. It's going to it's going to be added to you, just like any other addition and subtraction. Let not steadfast love forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart, your lave. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of Yahuwah and men. Just like Yahushua Mashiach in Luke chapter 2. They say when he went into the temple, he was answering and asking questions, and he grew in favor with both Yahuwah and men. He said, why do you think Yahushua ain't do that? He did everything you was telling him to do. He said, my son, who are you talking to? My son, all that are immersed into Yahushua have been immersed into his body. So he's talking to you. If you are a part of him, if you in him, get what it says. So you must find favor and good success in the sight of Yahuwah and man. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. So that means everything. That means all your 12 cranial nerves, your, your, your melanin centers, your frontal lobe, your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, all of the attributes of your medulla, and all the chemicals that pump through your mind, your corpus callosum, and every attribute of your brain stem, even your brain that even has like branches of a tree, and your whole body. He said, and do not lean to your own understanding, because your own is understanding is he's, Yahuwah is not your shepherd. He said, if you lean to your own understanding, then you're gonna find yourself, how you say, going opposite of the shepherd, what the shepherd told us to do. Because this is the shepherd talking. My son. Right? But it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. So in everything you do, when you eat or drink, whether you do, whether you're walking down the street, walk by the ladder and you rise up, when you clean, when you cook, when you, when you prepare meals, when you walk down the street, when you exercise, when you take care of animals, when, you, when, you, when you're doing everything, anything you do in life, your, your job doesn't matter. He said, you're even your persecution at your job, all that. He says what? And he will make straight your paths. Who gonna do it? So he gonna see you doing something and then he gonna be nudging you here and there to make it more straighter. So whatever you put your hand to do, do with all your might. So he'll be nudging you and he'll make it even more straight. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear your hood and turn away from evil. Turn away from the raw that you do. The evil desires that you do. He said, he said, turn away from Ra and do good. He says, remember what we just read? Yeah, I walked through the valley or Yalak in the Gay, Gay, the valley in the Goy. I will fear no Ra. I will fear no evil. Why? Because I fear Yahuwah. And I turn away from it. I don't fear, I don't fear evil. I just turn away from it because I fear him. I fear my shepherd, because Yahuwah is the shepherd. Verse, verse 8 says. It will be healing or a food to your flesh, your shore, and refreshment to your bones. Isn't that what he said? He leaves me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He refreshes my bones. He restores my soul. He restores it. Honor you who are with your wealth, okay, and with the first fruit of your produce. The same thing when you look at how we planted and harvesting, why he say he gonna restore my soul? He gonna restore it back to the beginning. He's going to restore it back to the beginning. That's why he says, honor your with your wealth and with the fruit. First, he said, first fruits are your produce. Because we can ready to do that. Amazingly, we can ready to do all that. It says, then your barns will be filled with plenty, huh? And your vats will be bursting with wine. Because when you put Yahuwah first, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise Yahuwah's discipline. That's male and female. And be, be, not, be weary of his reproof, for Yahuwah reproves him whom he loves, as they father the son in whom he delights. Right? He, he reproves him he loves. Right? This, is, this is Psalms of Shalom 10, 1-3. Happy Simcha is the man whom Yahuwah remembers with rebuking and protects from the evil way with a whip, that he may clean be cleansed from his sin that it might not increase. So you see, Yahuwah is my shepherd. His rod and his staff, it turns me back. It comforts me. It makes me repent. It makes me stop. It makes me put down things. 
It makes you put down mindsets, behaviors, hatred, envy, right? Loving less. Like he makes me put down it all. Verse 2 says, the one who repairs his back for the whip shall be purified. <laughs> He's not purified. Why? Because I'm going I'm to stop you from doing a lot of things. For Yahuwah is good to those who endure discipline. Huh? Oh, you mean he is good? He said goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of his life. They're going to follow him all the days of his life, right? Good to those who endure discipline. Because you can't endure it. You say, well, how you going to get disciplined? By somebody talking to you and rebuking you out of their mouth? Yeah, you can get, them, you can get somebody can say something to you, but he'll say he'll discipline your life. He put you in a situation where you gotta stay in it. He said, "You nope, you gotta stay in that. Nope, you gotta stay in that." You said, "All this stuff going around me, I gotta stay." Yep, you gotta stay right there. You gotta stand still. He leaves me beside the still waters. He makes me stand right, stay still right there. You tell me I gotta stay right there and, and suffer all that. He's like, "Yeah." That's the only reason I put you in that situation. You gotta endure the discipline. Verse three, because. A lot of things that happen to us is because of the things we've done in our life. Verse 3 says, For he will straighten the ways of the righteous. Huh? It says, My son, do not lean to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge your hood, and he will make straight your paths. For he will straighten the ways of the righteous. He said, You know how your parents say, I'm going to straighten you out? I'm going to straighten you out when you get home. And amazingly, he said, He said, He leave me beside still water, he stored my soul. Y'all have no lack. He said, You're going to dwell in the house of your hood. He said, I'm going to straighten you out when you get home. For he will straighten the ways of the righteous and will not bend them by discipline. Right? I ain't going to bend you all the way. And the mercy of Yahuwah is upon those who truly love him. He said, I'm not, gonna, I'm not cruel like that. He said, I will not do that. But he said, if you truly love him, if you truly love him. Right? This book, Bereshit, 1, 4, 14 through 19. And Yahuwah Elohim said, let there be my oars. Or shed lizard in the rakia of the Shamaim and separate the Badal, the Yum, from the light, from the night. And let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, years. And let them be for my ore and the expense of the Shamaim to give ore on the earth. And it was so. So you look at all the lights that's on the earth. And he's saying that Yahuwah is your shepherd. He's saying that, he said he restores my soul. He brings me back to the beginning. What happens? And Yahuwah he made the two great lights or Gadur Ma'or the greater light the greater light or Ma'or the greater Ma'or to rule Mim Shala the day and the lesser light or to rule or Mim Shala the night and the Kuka being the stars and the Kuka and Allahim set them in the expanse of the Rakia to give light on the earth to Mashal over the day and over the night what time is this daytime right the light is up and there was evening and there was morning Rabbi E. Yun. That's the fourth day of unleavened bread, Kagmatsu. We're right in the middle of it. It's the fourth day. Bereshit 4, 1, Aramaic Targums, Jonathan. Same thing. Yahu Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the Shamaim to separate the day from the night. Amazingly, you do these things, these, these Kagmats, and it's separating you. Like I say it's putting you, making you a difference between everybody else. Just like Yahuwah said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack. Right? He puts it, he said, he's making me sit, uh, lay down in green pastures, leave me beside the still waters. He restores my life. He says, guess what he says? And let them serve the facades and festival times and the counting of the reckoning of days and sanctifying the beginning of months and the beginning of years. The incarnation of the months and the incarnation of years, solstices, new moons, cycles of, of the sun. And let them serve as lights in the firmament of Shamaim to get light upon the earth. And it was so. Yahuwah made two great lights. And they were equal in Kabul for the 21 and a half hours, less 672 parts an hour. After the moon spoke with a sunder's tongue against the sun, and it was made small. And he appointed the sun, which was the greater light, the dough, over the day. And the moon, that was lesser, to rule over the night, and the stars. And Yahuwah arranged them in the courses of the firmament of Shaman to light upon the earth, and to minister in the day and in the night. Remember we talked about Ra'a. It had shepherd and shepherdess. Yahuwah is my Ra'a, right? It had shepherd and shepherdess. He said, Ma'or is a greater light, lesser light. 
right? All these are a part of it, but most people don't know. It. But it says right here, and to separate the light from the day and the darkness from the night. And Yahuwah saw that it was good. He said, goodness and mercy are gonna follow me, both men and women, as we was reading. Men and women gonna follow me, and they're gonna be intelligent. They're gonna be pleasant, they're gonna be happy, they're gonna be all that. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. That's the day we on. Right? He said they're they gonna be some signs. He said, let them be for signs. He said, greater light and lesser light. He said, let them be for signs. He said, let them be for signs. Let them be for a signal, a miracle, proof, and also a warning to everybody else. But you, he said, you're supposed to be a miracle in your other proof. The standard. You're supposed to be the standard. You just talked about beautiful, intellectual, joyful, happy people. Intelligent. Who repents. Who allows me to turn them back. To refresh, he says, them to fosh, to restore their soul and turn their soul back. He said, you're the standard. He said, I don't want to be the standard. I said, man, you're you following the wrong person. He said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. Are you, you, people don't even know what they be saying. Yahuwah, Yahuwah is leading me. Are you sure? Yahushua Mashiach lead me. I said, this man is calling for a little bit more than what people are doing. He said, let it be for seasons. It's appointed times, meetings, sacred season. That's what we're in now. Fixed time. This thing's been fixed. I know people, everybody's on different times. You got some people who count from the first day of the equinox. You got some people who count from the new moon, from the first full moon. You got some people who count from the fourth day of creation, from the, from the season he first gave the seasons, right? From the, from the equinox. You got some people who count according to the moon, according to no moon, dark moon. That's why they're getting ready to do their new year coming up. Uh, he said coming up. Why? Because all the, everybody counts differently. Some people do it according to the sun. Some people do it according to the moon. Some people going to do it according to the greater light. Some people do it according to the lesser light. But he said, let it be for appointed seasons. He said, when you know them all, he said, intelligent people, he said, intelligent people are going to follow Yahuwah. They're going to know it all. They're going to know how, how Yahuwah works and why he does things. He said, goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of their life. Kaseed, right, Tahu. It means what? Fixed time, right? Seasons, right? Days, yum, day, day, year, daytime, year, opposed, division of time. You know what we talked about? A revolution of time? He says, days, journey, perpetually, per presently. Right? The word he says, what? This let it be for years, Shana, a division of time. Division of time. Just like we talk about door, generations, a revolution of time, a year. Every year. You know why people don't want to keep their year? Because of, because of what? Because of idol worship. They don't want to keep, they don't want to understand the Muaz and Feasts because of idol worship. They worship sun, moon, and stars. Like we say, ADHD come from idol worship. ADHD come from idol worship. It come from worshiping the sun, moon, and stars. It come from worshiping these gods. That's where it comes from. People want to say, oh, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a fixed, it's a fixed order. Like people don't understand that. All the things, the diseases they pronounce on you and all the spells they cast on you, all these are a part of it. They put these words in people's mind and they cast spells on people. It becomes from the sun, moon, and stars. And when you worship them, they can curse you too. Just like how you, just like how you, you who gives you over to your, your gods, he gives you over to what you do. He said, you want to serve them gods? Guess what? I'm going to have them curse you with all their spells and all their diseases they say out of their mouth. And you're going to believe every single word they say. He said, I'm going I'm to let them curse you. And let them, let them entangle your thoughts and your consciousness with the, what they say. He said, I'm not like that. You know, I'm you hood like, man. You hood. He said, goodness and mercy follow me all the days. But you're like, he said, you have come with me, you have no lack. But you guess what happens? When you plead to them, you hood say, they start cursing you. Just like Balaam. Just like their gods. Just like the seven stars in Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Bear Conley, and, and the hunter. They start hunting you down. That's what they do. But he said, measure of time. Shana. Right? Just like he says, what? That the the let, greater light, lesser light, they them rule. That means shallow, have dominion, rule, realm. He said, rule the realm. What realm are you in? To rule. Just like the Shemash and Kukubim, how he said, the Shemash and the Yark, they rule during the day. The sun, the Shemash we're ruling right now. Right? To rule. He said, that word for the rule day and night, 
Because it's not Mimsha, it's it still have dominion. It's Masha to rule. To rule, have dominion. Just like he told Yahuwah, he said, he said, because you did this thing, he said what? He said, in, in child and pain, you shall bring forth children. In your Tashuka, your desire, your longing shall be your husband. He shall Masha over you, just like he did in the beginning. He said, Yahuwah restore you back how it was in the beginning. He gave you a rule back, but he, he said, Okay, you're going to be a lesser light. He's going to be a greater light. Right? But right here, and it says right here, that's the fourth day. This is the fourth day. This is the fourth day of Kog Matzah. This is the fourth day where one is supposed to eat unleavened bread. But it's symbolization from the beginning. This is the fourth day. He said, have you taken your dominion and authority yet? Have you taken your mashal yet? People say, or are you still, people saying, lazy? Are you, have, you, have, you, have you conquered, how you say, sluggishness? Have we conquered our lives? Why? Right, this is Book of Shemuth, Exodus 20, 1 through 4. And Yahuwah spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah, your Alayim, who brought you out of the land of Mizraim, out of the house of slavery. That word for slavery is abide. Where do you see abide at? When he put Adam in the garden, and he said, abide, shamar, and abide. Why would he... Why would he say, I'm bringing you out of slavery of Ham? The Mizraim is Ham's lineage, who rebelled against Yahuwah through Nimrud and all the teachings of his father, Ham, Ham, and they had a whole lineage of people who rebelled. They followed sorcery and necromancy and spirit channeling and div divination. They followed the fallen the teachings of the fallen and Cain. He said, I brought you out of that to be a servant out of slavery. You was a slave in their house. You was a slave in their house, in a bod. You weren't a slave in the gun anymore because you're supposed to be, how you say, working for me in the gun. But for some reason, you went to go work for Ham, who wasn't even in the teachings of Nuak, who walked away and rebelled. He said, I brought you out of that lineage. I brought you from the people. Verse 3 says, You shall have no other Allahim before me because you who is your shepherd. He said, You shouldn't have no other gods before me. None. You shall not make to yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in the Shamayim from the beginning, above, remember in the second day of creation, or that is in the Adats beneath, third day of creation, or in the water under the earth. This is in the beginning. You shall not bow down to them or serve them or abide. The same word. You should not bow down to them or serve them, Abad. For I'm Yahuwah, your Allahim, a jealous Allahim, because if you serve them, you get the same diseases they get. That's why they be on TV. These are the side effects of what you're taking and everything you do and everything you're doing. This is called it. They have little clots and all these things. And then guess what happens? You go to the store and you buy it. Even though it says that. Even though the serpent, Nakash, said everything is going to do to you and you still go buy it. I say you still. I say moving in the three in the, in, the, in, the, in the rat race. They got you in the, in the labyrinth and got you in a maze in your mind. And some people are still trapped in them, even though they're free, and they don't even have a job. Why? Because when he said you wake up in the morning, you have a nightmare. <gasps> I gotta get to work, and you don't even have a job. <laughs> I can't go to school. <laughs> it'd be it'd be it don't even be there. It'd be the Shabbat. He said, you shall not bow under them or serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, and made jealous Elohim. He said, you jealous. He jealous. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children. To the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Why? Because you, you are a servant. Why did he say you hate me? Because you are an abad, and you bow down to them. You serving them, and you bow down to them. That's why you hate me. But showing steadfast love huh, to thousands of those who love me. And keep my commandments. He said, "You love me." He said, "You keep my commandments, right?" This, he said, "What?" He said, I'm, "He said, I delivered you. I'm Yehuda. You brought you out of the land of Mizraim, out of the house of slavery." Yeah, Yehuda don't care. We don't left. If one took the pasach and then did, started eleven bread, he said, "We don't left. We got our kneading pots in our hand. We got our need. We we, we don't left. We gone." Right? One shouldn't even have the mindset anymore. But he said, "Out of the house of slavery." Right, a house of what? Habitation. We just talked about, he said, you're going to dwell in the house of Yahuwah now. Now you're in the house of Yahuwah. Now Yahuwah leading you and guiding you as his shepherd. I done brought you out. I done brought you out as your shepherd. 
and you ain't gonna have no lack. And I'm restoring you, your nefash back, your soul, because you were dead. And now you're alive. But it says right here, Ba'id, house, house, habitation, dwelling place. He said, I brought you a bowl of light and darkness. I brought you out of the family of Ham, the house of people, organized body. He said, he said, I brought you out of an organized body of Ham, a sorcerer's spirit channels, wizards, warlocks, worshiper of the hunter star, all these beings, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, the bear constellation, the, the Pleiadian, Madonna, Mahadana, the influences of these things. I brought you out of all these places, the influences of all this. And guess what? I brought you out of the house of slavery. Abad with an iron. Slave servant, man servant, bondman. You know what a slave is? That's somebody who got to do what the person in the house tell them to do. You are you are a part of the Ham's house, Ham's house, idol worshippers. And guess what? When they tell you to do something, you got to do it. He said, "I brought you out of that." That word for you know that word for a bar was seen in Bereshit two and fifteen. And you know, Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him in the gun of Aden to abide, work it, and keep it. This is before he cast him out. This is before he cast him out, but he's, he made you a servant for him to shamar and guard his God, his garden, not their garden. Not build their cities, Ramses and Bethune. He said, I didn't make you to build their cities. The children of Cain build Babel, Mizraim. I didn't, build, I didn't tell you to build them cities. Make a city and call it Enoch, like Cain. Right, he said, you shall not bow down to them. That word for bow down is shakab. You shall not bow down. You should not prostrate. You shouldn't be de depressed in mind. Oh, I can't go to my, I don't have a job anymore. Oh, I can't eat this food anymore. Oh, you all, you all, you bow down to them. And people think it bow down is literally just bowing your neck. You just bowing your mind and saying things out of your mouth. Because you say, I'm missing you. You missing it. Like they say. I'm missing all the things I used to do with that person. I'm missing all the things I used to do there. You depressed. You bound down yourself to them in your mind. You stooping down. You say you worshiping them in your mind. Your mind is bowed down. You ain't got to literally bow your back. Your mindset can bow yourself down to them. Your mindset. Why are they prospering? They are so better than us. Look at how good they got it. You bound down yourself to these to the things that he told you not to. He said, make stoop the worship. People saying this is this is why people he said this is why people don't how you say make the make the jump. How you say the leap. Like Morpheus on, on Matrix. He said he, he tried to jump across the building. He's like, man, I'm trying to free your mind. He jumped to the other side of the building. He's like, man, you're depressing. You're depressing and bow down to, bowing down to their gods in your mind. Right? He says right here, this, this Deuteronomy 8, this Deuteronomy Dabarim 8, 1 through 10. He says, the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do that you may live and multiply. Isn't that what he said to Adam? And to go in and possess the land that Yahuwah swore to give your father. What are you going to do in the land? You master shepherds. What are you going to do? You're shepherdesses. What are you gonna do there? You're gonna farm and you're gonna take care of animals. And you're gonna you're gonna take care of families. That's what you all gonna do. What else are you gonna do in the land? What did he make Adam to do? And let me guess, I'm gonna do nothing and just sit around and look at a book. Man, you who said, I'm gonna no longer put, I'm gonna put my debar in you so you can actually do it. Right, you, look, you look at all these people, that's all they do all day. And I'm not talking as wrong to study and read, but Yahuwah, when we start looking at all these people, they got, they got buildings where they just sit there and they just look at, look at all this stuff all day. And you be like, so y'all gonna do that all day? He said, there's a whole big giant world out here. You see all these animals and creatures and trees and animals and fresh air and rivers and streams, you're gonna miss out. What about that? She be like, he said, he said, the, he said that the bar is in you. 
But he said, he said, possess the land that Yahuwah swore to give your fathers. You shall remember the whole way that Yahuwah, your Elohim, has led you. Huh? Yahuwah is my shepherd. He led you these 40 years in the wilderness that he, in the wilderness, where you at? He said, in the wilderness. That means you out there with trees, animals, all these things. That he might humble you. So he led you out in the wilderness because you know in the wilderness you can't go to the grocery store. In the wilderness you can't, you can't, you can't get those luxuries anymore. So he's literally trying to get people to understand when you trust in me with all your heart, mind, and soul, it's more like, ooh, sufficient is the day. We don't know what we're going to eat today. We may get some food today. We may not. Yahuwah is my shepherd. And guess what it says? Bless you these 40 years that he might humble you because if he can humble a person, then he, he can give you the reward of being humble. He said, if you don't want to be humble, then... It's like I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep leading you around for 40 years until you can become humble. So the faster you become humble and walk in humility, the faster you how you say you get to the place where you need to go. Testing you, right? To know what is in your heart. To know what was in your heart. That's only me doing it. Whether you keep the commandments or not, whether you how you say the rod and thy staff they come from, whether you repent or not. And he humbled you and led you and to let, let you hunger and fed you with manna. So I starved you and I gave you, he said, I break your fast with manna. You know how people say, I break my fast? So you who have made you hunger, then he breaks your fast with manna. So he's trying to change your appetites, which you did not know. Nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone. So when they came out of Mizraim, what did they have? They just had bread, lakam, unleavened bread. But man lives by every the bar that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. Huh? Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack. Yahuwah clothed, he said, your clothing did not wear out on you. Your foot did not swell for these 40 years. Because you know why? Because of the food you were eating. You had, your weight was not as big as it used to be. Your, your, your shoes were not getting all that pressure at the bottom. And your feet didn't swell because he was feeding you food. How you say it? they call it? They call they call the food that he says anti-inflammatory. How you say it? Anti-inflammatory food. <laughs> Verse five says, "Know then in your heart that as man disciplines his son, and we just talked about this father not the chasing of Yahuwah, because Yahuwah is your shepherd. Yahuwah, our Elohim, disciplines you." So you shall so show you keep the commandments of Yahuwah, your Elohim, by walking in his ways and fearing him. Not fearing the gods of this world. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is bringing you into a, a good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out of the valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive, olive trees and honey. A land which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will he says in which you will lack nothing Yahuwah is my shepherd I have no lack he restores me back through humility and he brings me to a place as it was in the beginning because in this description you don't see anything about no eating no animals and no flesh when he described it to you he was trying to change their appetites before they got there because he didn't want them to eat, have that in their mind anymore. Because when he go back to the land, it's gonna be just like the gun, the gun, just like the garden. It was to go back to that mindset. That was the whole plan. He restores my soul back. He turns my soul back. So verse 10 says, and ye shall eat and be full, and you shall barak Yahuwah, your Allahim, for the good land that he's given you. So he's telling you. You're going to be, just like you said, you're going to be, you're going to barack me for the good land. Because in the beginning, he said, it was very good. Mayo towel. Every herb you see is going to be for food for you and the animals. That's the whole plan. Never stop. Never stop. This, this is verse 11. says, take care lest you forget you who you're all in by not keeping his commandments and his rules and statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have, have is multiplied. Isn't that Adam and Kuhu? Cool? 
then your heart be lifted up, and you forget you who your Elohim and you be, who brought you out of the land of Mizraim, out of the house of slavery. Who guess what? Who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with fiery serpents and scorpions and, and, and thirsty ground? But there was no water. Who brought you out? He said, well, "Either I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thirsty ground where there's no water. That's the shadow of death." Who brought you out of the flinty rock? Who fed you out of the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you, and to do good in the end, beware. So he said, beware after all that. Lest you say in your heart, because you know that's easy for us, easy for us to say this. My power in my hand have gotten me this well. He said, I did it. After he bring you back to the beginning, how it was, change your mindset, humble you, give you nice, good food, and foods that he, he gave you in the beginning, gave you back your land, and you're supposed to have the same mindset of a body and servant in the garden, just like Adam was in the beginning, and I brought you out of Mizraim, just like I cat Garash Adam out, and I bring you back, and I bring you back, and everything increases, and I do all these things. I brought you through scorpions and, and fiery serpents and thirsty ground, the shadow of death. I'm leading you and guiding you, and then you say, after all that, I did it all. Then you come arrogant like Pharaoh. I made the knob. My power and my might I have got me this well. Now you done, now you done messed up. Verse 18, you shall remember you who are your Elohim. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. That he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is his day. So he brought us out. He getting ready to, guess what he getting ready to do? People saying, what do you mean? What do you think he getting ready to do? He getting ready to increase your wealth. And people believe it. People don't believe it. He getting ready to increase you. He brought you out of the house of bondage, and he can ready to increase you. If it's your time. Unless you, unless you ain't become humble yet. Verse 9, if you, he says, this day, and if you forget you who your Elohim and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, that's what happens. I solemnly warn you today, you shall surely perish. He said, I solemnly warn you. Today is a day of warning. He said, I warn you, you shall surely perish, you worship these gods. After I do all this, he like, man, hold up. So you telling me I do all this for you, and then you're going to go worship another god? You're going to seek after another, another shepherd? He said, yeah, he said, you shall surely perish like the nations that Yahuwah makes to perish before you. you so shall you perish, because you would not obey the voice huh, of Yahuwah, your Elohim. He said, you're going to surely perish. Right? He said, beware. That word, that word for, uh, that word for beware, look at that word beware. That word beware, of course, you know, you look at other writings, other translations, that word is not there. Verse 17 says, lest you say in your heart. That word for lest you say in your heart is labab. It says, lest you say in your inner man, in your mind, in your heart, in your conscience. In your inter interior organ, that's your kidneys, that's your liver, right? That's your intestines, right? That's in your mind. That's you say in your interior organs, or your mind, your will, your wholeheartedness. Remember you said, love you who with all your heart, your whole heart, and understanding? Right, you see that word beware, that word for beware was put there, but he says be beware means be cautious and alert up to the danger of what? Your mind. Why you gotta be in danger of your mind? Your labab is more like an action. When I mean, you look at the action word, lab is your mind. Labab is like, I'm gonna show action toward my arrogance toward you who and say, hey, you look at me. My power, my wealth, in my mind, you start boasting about it. You start moving, using body movements with it. With your mind, labab, it's, it's double, right? Double portion of your arrogance. Right, your inner man. Right, it says what? He says, let's you say my power and my might, that word for might is koa, because we know our koa, it means strength. Might, human strength, vigor, force. He said, my force, my might, my strength. I did it. I got that thing. I Man, I understood all the charts and I did all these things and I sowed the seeds and they miraculously came up and I and I found these things and, and it was all me. Right? And all this stuff. You were like, man, it's me, I'll do that. 
And then he says right here, beware lest you say in your heart, my power and my might. He said, my power, that word, that word for power is of stem, my bones, my power, henceforth, my body, my strong substance, my bones, strong substance, my power, hence. He said, you only get, you only, only barack you if you do what you're supposed to. He's like, okay, I did what I'm supposed to. And you see the results. He'd be like, yeah, Yo, you see what happened. He do exactly what he's going to say. But if he said, when you don't do what he says, and he said, you see what I do? He said, beware. That's all I do it for. I just want you to be careful what you do. That's the only reason he does it. I want you to be careful what you do. He says, power, might. He said, he said, my, he said that my power and my might have got me this wealth. That word for wealth is kayil. In that verse. He said that my power and my might got me this kayil, this strength, this wealth. This force, this strength. He said, he said, he's saying all that stuff is is, is Caillou. People say, I'm Caillou. I say, do you have all the stuff he said you're gonna get? Do you have it? Right. But he said, all that stuff I'm gonna give you. If you, you turn your mind back to how it was in the beginning, you allow me to humble you and change your appetites and bring you back. He said, I call you. He said, my power and my might got me this call you. He's saying, nope. Right here. And it says right here, he said, if you, he said, and if you forget you who you're Allahim and go out to other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely abide, abide. When it says surely perish, it is abide, abide. And it's spelled with an aleph. See, this is the danger. Like people be spelling it, say abide. Let's spell with an aleph, baith, and dalif. No, abad in, in Bereshith is spelled with an ayin, baith, and dalif. This is spelled with an aleph, baith, and dalif. And it's what? You show surely perish. That's abad, abad. That means what? It means vanish, destroyed. We know that word destroyed, the destroyer. We know these are demons, shadim, poverty demons. You know what a poverty demon is? In the secret book of Yukonah, it talks about these poverty demons. He said, you're going to go astray. You're going to perish to be exterminated. He said, he's going to exterminate you. He said, man, I don't want that to happen. He said, you're going to perish. Why? Because you got diseases. Destroy. He said, I'm going to destroy you. You're going to be a wanderer. Amazingly how you just change one word. You change the olive, you change the iron from iron by dollar to olive by dollar. And that means destroy. You'll die. Just by changing one word. Just by changing one letter. You get what it says? To destroy. To break, to destroy, not escape. He said, you ain't going to escape. You're going to perish. You know how people say, yeah, boy, I got, boy, boy, I, I know how to get that money. And you be like, you sure? You sure will you? He said, you sow the seed. You who will get the increase, right? Who, who going who gonna to increase your thing? He said, you, all you do is sow the seed. Yahuwah gives the increase. You ain't doing nothing. People be thinking that I did. You didn't do anything. Yahuwah sowed the seed. You sowed the seed, Yahuwah increases. So if, you, if your stuff ain't increasing, it's because Yahuwah don't want it to increase. It's just really that simple. It's not that, it's not, people are making it so difficult. It's not. But he said, right here, Bereshit 2, 2 and 7, he said, he shall surely perish. But, there, but, but, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. From the day you eat of it, you shall surely move, move. Same thing in the beginning. Same thing he gave them in the wilderness. Same commandments from the beginning. It's just the fact that people, how you say, want to consume things and eat things and do behaviors of Mizraim. And that's why they can't see. Because Yahuwah put a blinder over their face. He said, surely die. Move, move. You shall surely die. You shall surely perish. Same thing. A body, body, just do it. Aleph by dollar is move, move. You're gonna die if you worship these other gods and serve them and worship them. It's gonna happen to you, and it ain't nothing I can do it to you. He said, I'm gonna pray for you. It's like there's no point in praying for somebody who worship other gods. And I was like, and you call on your who too? He like, man, there's a Malachi Scud missile coming your way. He said, them drones, you know, how the drones fly over, 
and you'd be like, man, you got a you got a red tag on you. It's like a red marker on you. I don't know what what's that thing on your shoulder. This this Bith Malachim 17, 1 through 3. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Yehuda, Hushia, the son of Eli, began to reign in Samaria over Yashra. And he reigned nine years, and he did what was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. Yet, not as the kings of Yashra, who were before him. Against him came Shalom Manasseh, king of Assyria. So when you get things come at you, it's because you're doing evil in the sight of Yahuwah. And Hoshea came, became his vassal and paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria found treachery in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to, to Saul, the king of Mizraim, and offered no tribute to the king of Assyria, as he had done year, year by year. And he talking about, we talked about this with Philip. Remember when, Philip, when he, remember he didn't pay homage to Herod or uh, Caesar, and he had Herod take everything he had. But he see right here, he said year after year, you're supposed to pay tribute to him, tribute, right? Your taxes. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Isn't that what it did to him? Then the king of Assyria invaded all the land and came to Samaria for three years and besieged it. That's what happens. And in the ninth year, Hoshea, the king of Assyria, captured Samaria and carried the Israelites away to Assyria and placed them in Hala, in the Habor of the river Gazon, in the city of the Medes. And this occurred because the people of Yashra had sinned against Yahuwah, their Allahim, who had brought them out of the land of Mizraim for under the hand of Pharaoh, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Mizraim, and have feared other gods. This is the only reason it happens. He's like, Yahuwah allows these things to happen, and you gain your will. She said, you fear other gods. You want to serve other gods. He said, being that you do that, you're going to surely perish. So stop worshiping other gods. How are you saying? Stop going after other gods. Stop worshiping other gods. He says, and walked in the customs of the nations, whom Yahuwah drove out before the people of Yashra in the custom and in the customs that the kings of Yashra had practiced. Stop doing what they do. Because, you know, people don't want to be the oddball out. People don't want to be, I don't want to be like I'm like the only person. And the people of Yashra did secretly against did, did secretly against Yahuwah, their Allahim, things that were not right. They built for themselves high places in their towns. From the watchtowers and the fortified cities, they set up for themselves pillars of Asherim in every high hill and under every green tree. Notice who got who who he put all the sin on. He put all the sin on the king. And he says, and they made offerings in the high places. That, it says, as the nations did whom Yahuwah carried away from before them. And they did wicked things, provoking him, Yahuwah to anchor. And they served idols. Then we just talk about this. He said, beware. He said, the day you do it, you're going to die. Surely, you're going to surely die. Abad, abad. Move, move. Just like Adam. Of which Yahuwah, your Allahim, said to them, you shall not do this. Yet Yahuwah warned Yasharal and Yahuwah. But every Nabi and every seer saying, by every Nabi and every seer saying, turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes. What were the commandments? Thou shalt have no Allah Halim before him. We just read it. In accordance with all Torah that I commanded your fathers. Who? What father? That I, that I, he says, and that I sent you, sent to you my servants, the Nabi'in. He said, I sent them. Right? He said, and they set up pillars. He said, they set for themselves pillars. Pillars is what? Must, he says, must stop up. It means an idol. They set up mastama, a stone, a mastaba, standing image. Pillars and stumps. Image and pillars. He said, do you have that? Remember we talked about little 11? Little kamats, little saur. It says obelisk. They got them a little obelisk in their heart. Pillars, stump. They got an obelisk. A mastaba. He said they got idols. He said, hey, people got this stuff. And people are like, what's that on top of the, these buildings out here? Well, that's an obelisk. These people got it. And some people still do. In their heart. They still got it in their heart. Right? 
People saying, why you gonna say sing unto him a new song? People have no idea. This is right here, it says, Pillars and Asherim. He said, they set up Mustafa of Asherim. It means groves. People saying, why they got groves? Why do they, got, why they call it an asherim? Notice it say goddess. Oh, here we go. The female worship. They got a goddess worship. Just like goddess Diana or the Phoenician god, Asherim or Asherim. They got a grove. People saying, why they got a grove over here? They, say, they call it the grove. What's in the grove? An asherim. They got a god. And they said they, they joyful for their, their Asherah too. And it also means what? Sacred trees. Or you see that you see this all around. All around. And no matter what country you go to, they're God and goddesses. Right? You don't, it doesn't matter. They're everywhere. Babylonian Asherah. And then guess what? They have people, they give people these names. And then they make them singers. And then guess what people do? They sing in their songs. They're giving praise to them. Don't even know they are. They feel the heart. And mo majority of the time, they don't even know it. You don't even know. They worship their feminine energy. And that's where all this, the men with men, women with women come from. The goddess worship. That's where ADHD come from. That's where hepatitis and hepatitis, hepatitis A and B come from. They come from goddess worship. From other god worship. When you don't worship Yahuwah, you get hepatitis, hepatitis B. You get parasites. You get parasites in your stomach for eating meat and, and all these other stuff they make, these little, these little vegan patties they can make and <laughs> putting parasites in them. They got, they got all types of tapeworms in it. But you get all types of stuff. You get all types of uh, things that come in your body. And you'd be like, man, what's wrong with me? He say, what? Because he, he, these idol worshippers, these gods. He said, these guys won't do that. These guys won't put that in your food. I said, okay. They will. Right. That's why he told him, You espouse to go. He said, Put a knife in your throat if you want to go. Verse 14 says, But they will not listen. But they were stubborn. There we go. He said, I ain't listening to that. As their fathers had been. There we go. And they wonder why we ain't. He said, Man, why are your wealth ain't increasing? Why you ain't being fruitful and multiplying? Why are you not prospering? Why has things not happening for you? Why are things not accelerating for you? Why? Why? Because you ain't humble yet. It took them 40 years to get them humble. Think about it. 40 years just to get you humble, to increase you. And people want to stay. People want to stay hard-headed in the stomach, and they be like, "Man, why is nothing happening for me? Why is nothing increasing? Why is everything been taken? Because he's taking everything because you're not humble." He said, "Who did not do that? Who did? He said, the faster you humble yourself, the faster you increase." People say, I want everything. I'm like, man, it's not that hard. Who did not believe in Yahuwah, their Allahim. They despised his statutes and his covenant and made their fathers in the, in the warnings that he gave them. They what? They despised the warnings. They despised his statutes and the covenant that he made with their fathers in the warnings that he gave. It's just warnings. They despised them and went after other idols, false idols and became false. People saying, I ain't false. I'm like, dude, you ain't false. You worship idols. You worship other gods. You do opposite what Yahushua Mashiach said. I know you worshiping idols. He said, and they followed the nations that were around them. Because they love to look around, look around, look around. Look at what they doing. Mm -mm. Concerning whom Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded them that they should not do like them. That's the whole point. You want to do exactly what they do. They want to be exactly like them. I don't want nothing to do with it. People be like, why do, why do you be wanting to get away? But I don't want nothing to do. I don't want to be associated with nobody. I don't want to be associated with anything. I say, I'm a real boring person. Like like, like, like you say, I don't, I don't have an eventful life. My, my life ain't eventful. And I definitely don't want to be around none of that. He said, I don't want nothing to do with it. Take me off. Move me up. Take my name off. Right? He said, don't do like them. And they abandoned all the commandments of Yahuwah their Elohim and made themselves metal images of two calves and made an asterisk and, wor and worship all the hosts of the Shamayim. We just talked about the hosts of the Shamayim, the Kukha, the Shamayim and, and all of the stars. They worship the Pegasus star, the Peg star, the Beetlejuice star. They worship all these gods. They worship the, they worship the Seven star. They worship the Hunter star, Orion, o Osiris. They worship Ahathor. They worship Mahadana. 
They worship all these gods. They worship beyond. And then she says, right? They did. All y'all do, y'all worship all these gods. I don't worship these gods. I don't sing these songs. I don't remember. He said, I don't sing them no more. He said, why? Because I realized. He said, you realize the more you do it, the more they gods come back in your mind. You be like, that's they gods. You be like, you know, you know some of them, you know, man, some of these songs people, people be singing, I'll be like, you gonna need to check the lyrics. He said, worship, worship all the hosts of Charmaine and serve Baal. And they burned their sons and their daughters as an offering. They killed their own kids to an offering. That's what happens. People saying, why are the children all running crazy? Because nobody care about their children anymore. They offering them up to and burn it and send them through the fire to get wealth. Notice when you leave Yahuwah, you, you had to burn your children to get wealth. And they served Baal. And he said, Abad. They had to be, they were slaves to Baal. They were slaves to Asher. They were slaves to the host of the Shamayins. And they burned their sons, right? And it says, burn, and they burned their sons and, and their daughters and offering used divin, and offering as offerings and used divination and omens and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of Yahuwah, provoking him to anger. Therefore, Yahuwah was very angry with Yahshua and removed them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Yehuda, Yehuda only. So he kicked all of them out. He threw them all out of his sight. And you say, why he, why he cast Cain out? Why he cast Adam out? Why Pharaoh said, Y'all gotta get out of here. Y'all gotta go way far. He like, man, y'all gotta get out of here. He garroshed them. Verse 19 says, Yehuda, guess what it says? Yehuda, guess what? You know how it says, Yehuda only, see? You know Yehuda. Yehuda, right? 19. Yehuda also did not, not keep the commandments of Yehuda, their Elohim, but walked in the customs that Yashara had introduced. And Yehuda rejected all the descendants of Yashara and afflicted them and gave them into the hand of the plunderers until he cast them out of his sight. When he had torn Yasharal from the house of Dawood, they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and Jeroboam drove Yasharal from following Yahuwah and made them commit sin. And the people of Yasharal walked in all the sins of Jeroboam and did not depart from them until Yahuwah removed Yasharal out of his sight. As he had spoken by all his servants in Nabi'im, so the Yasharal was exiled from their own land to Assyria until this day. That's why we, they say, Yasharal and Yehuda were exiled from their land until this day, presently, as we're speaking right now. Because you worship other gods. He said, you, and you became false. And you worship, you worship their gods, right? And he says what? And they burned their sons and their daughters in an offering, and they used divination. That word for divination is kasem. Kasem. Kuf, samik, me, final form. Kasim, divination, witchcraft. They did witchcraft, divination, false prophets, like divination, oracles. They did divination. He said they did all this to their gods. Divination, divine decisions. Because you know when the people do divination, they make decisions based upon those divine witchcraft spells. He said they what? They follow omens. That word for omens is nakash. He said they, they use divinations and omens. They use nakash. Practice divination. Divine origins. Observe signs, right? Diligently observe. Practically. Practice foretelling. They, they did it. Magic spells. Whispers. Practice divination. Enchantments. Divine. Diligently observe, right? For evil purposes. When you look at all these things that people do on the earth, all the things that people do, enchanter. Right? Yahuwah's miracles look like it. That's why you have Pharaoh throwing out his rod and then you have Meshach throwing out his rod. It looked like it, but it ain't. It ain't. It's gonna swallow, it's gonna swallow that Nakasha. That Nakasha ain't gonna do nothing. But guess what that word Nakasha? Same word. It says, Bereshit 3.12, the, the man said, the woman that you gave me, gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. And then Yahuwah Elohim said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the, the, the serpent, Nakash, deceived me. Nakash, he said, Nasa, and I ate. 
He said they practice omens. Same thing in the beginning. Amazingly, all these words come right back up to the, go right back to the beginning of the garden. Like everything you see them moving through and, and it's all about the garden. He said, he said, so everything he said, yeah, my, you is my shepherd. He restores, he turns back my soul. He made me repent. To go back to the beginning. That's what he's making us do. He said, why are you making us do this? Because that's where it started at and that's where it's going to end. Right, this, this is Yeremiah 3, 1 through 5. And Yahweh said, Yahweh said to me, faithful as Yasharal has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Yehuda. You know how Yahweh would be the comparing wives? Because remember, he had Yasharal and then he had Yehuda. You see how he comparing wives? <laughs> he like, Yasharal, Yehuda, ugh, ugh. He said, Yahuwah said, if, to me, faithful Yasharal has shown herself more righteous than Yehuda. He looking like, man, none of them good, but one of them better than the other one. And people be like, How, why did Yahushua choose 12 disciples? Because they were more righteous than the other disciples that he had. It had nothing to do with anything else. They were just more righteous than them. He's like, man, Yahshua is more, he's like, treacherous Yehuda. Man, they, faithless Yahshua is more than the treacherous. He's like, faithless and treacherous. So it doesn't matter. You got to pick one. Verse 12 says, go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return faithless Yahshua, declares Yahuwah, and I will look on you, not look on you in anger, for I am merciful, declares Yahuwah, and I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt, that you rebelled against Yahuwah, your Allahim, just like you did in the beginning, and you're still doing it today. People are still doing it. And scattered your favors among the foreigners under every green tree. You know what they were doing? They were offering sacrifices on those trees, under those trees. And that you have not obeyed my voice, declares Yahuwah. Return, O faithless children. Look, my children, we talked about yesterday, the other time, keep yourself from idols. He said, you faithless children, declares Yahuwah, for I am your master, huh? I am your master. He said, return, O faithless children. No, he said faithless. Keep that word in mind. Faithless. O ye of little Omuna. You know how Yahushua said? O ye of little Omuna. Don't you remember the loaves that I had? Oh, you a little moon. You got a little leaven. He says, and I will take you from a city and two from a family. And I will bring you to Saloon, the parts place. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Right? That's what it says. And I will give you shepherds, like it says, after my own heart. Right? Right, that word for shepherds is ra. -a. He said, Yahuwah is my shepherd, right? He said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. It doesn't say, how you say, a bunch of ra'a. It says one. I'm going to give you a ra'a after my own heart. Who's going to feed you with knowledge and understanding? He said, I'm going to give you one shepherd after my own heart. Because all the other ones, I assure you, they made you worship idols. But it said right here, to pasture, to tend, to graze, to feed. The same thing, Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack to tend a flock that is pasture. It means herdsmen. Right? Herdsmen, right? It means friend. Because we know it means shepherd and shepherdess. Friend. Now he say both male and female. He said, mean, this shepherd going to be like Adam. Just like Adam. Adam. Companion. Herdsman. Right? It's going to be just like that. He said, he's going to feed you with knowledge because we know knowledge is da'ath. And he said, understanding. That word for understanding is sakal. He said, he's going to feed you with knowledge, da'ath, and prudence. He's going to teach you circumspect, to be circumspect, to understand, teach you how to prosper, to be prudent, circumspect, to look at, to look at or upon, to be circumspect, hence intelligent. Remember Goodness and mercy, or he say, Taub and Kasi gonna follow him all the days of his life. He said, Yahu is my shepherd. He gonna prosper you. Then we talk about in Dabarim, Deuteronomy. He said, If you diligently hearken to my voice, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every debar that comes out of my mouth. But what did they? He said, Beware lest you forget and you worship the idols and the host of the Shamaim. But you know what people want to do? People said they want to seek after the gods, the other gods. And then and, and, and think about it, Nakash is always trying to get you to worship the other gods. both male and female. That's all he wants. So he can pronounce his curses on you and then people believe all the diseases that they say. Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease. What's the other stuff they got? 
Parkinson's disease, uh, CTE, right? You believe all the curses they put on your life. You be like, man, that stuff real. ADHD, they cast all those spells upon you. And, you nobody, and guess the sad part about it? Nobody rebuke them. They're like, get behind me, Satan. Right? Nobody even care, because you know why? Yeah, we're blind. They think that things are real. They cast, they cast them spells on you every day. They say all these diseases on TV and you believe it. Yeah, they just, they just, they just, they, they, they running, they having a field day with people's minds. You're gonna need to do this and that. You need me to cut you open so I can implant a, 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 a nanite inside of your body and put it inside of your skull. What? You who, you who should heal people with just speaking? What you need to put a nanite in your body for? In your eye? Or in your leg? Attach a, attach a robot. But he said he's gonna he gonna he gonna do all that. He said Yeremiah 23 and 1. He said, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter my scatter the sheep of my pasture. Because we know he you know what the destroyer is. These are demons. These shepherds have demons coming at them. And he said they destroy the sheep of my pasture. He said, he said, I'm gonna give you a shepherd after my own heart. And he said, only one shepherd he's gonna give. He said, declare your whoa. Therefore, thus says you who your Elohim and Yahshua concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away. And you have, how are you going to scatter his flock? How he, when he, Yahuwah, cast them out of their side, his side? Out of worship. Worshiping the, the host of the Shamayim, the sun, moon, and the stars, the cuckoo bean, the hunter star, the Orion, Kitsil. They worship beetles. You know, the, they got this beetle in, uh, in Mizraim that people make shirts out and they wear it. They got beetles, and, they, and it's, it's supposed to be a symbolization of death, like his life and death. They put that, they put that on, and they be like, "Praise Yahuwah." <laughs> they be thinking, they be thinking like Yahuwah be accepting that stuff. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, your Elohim, and Yahshua, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away through idol worship, worship of the gods, worship of the insectoids and the creatures of the earth, and you have not attended to them. You ain't even go, you ain't even tend to the people. You don't even care. Behold, I will tend to you and your evil deeds. Declare your who? He's like, I'm gonna tend to you. You know how your parents say? Oh, what you said? I'm gonna tend to your behind though. I'm gonna get you. Declare your who. So that means, you know how people be trying to make you fear these people on earth? Guess what? You who lie, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get you. Don't worry. I'm gonna get you too. Then I gather, he said, then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where you have driven them. So think about it. He said, first I'm going to just get them and then I'm going to get them. And I will bring them back to their fold and they shall be fruitful and multiply. Huh? If they're going to be fruitful and multiply, it's just like in the beginning. And they're going to have, he said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to increase. And they're not going to be, they're going to be humble. And they're not going to say my power and my, my might has gotten me this well. And guess what he said after he did that? And I will set shepherds over them who will care for them. He said, I'm going to hire some people. Just like David. You know, Dawood, when he left to go fight, he said, oh, you wicked, you wicked servant. You did all that. He said, nah. He said, I left them with a the keeper. You wicked servant. That's what they say. You wicked child. <laughs> That's what they say about Yahushua. He's like, no, I love the way to keep it. You wicked, you wicked child. You know how they be saying it. I said, you might want to keep your mouth off of Dawood's son. He just like David. <laughs> he said, and I will send shepherds over them who will care for them. And they shall fear no more. He said, my son, if you don't lose sight of these things from the beginning, he said, you shall lay down and your sleep going to be sweet. It's going to be real sweet. They ain't going to fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing. They ain't going to be missing, declares Yahuwah. They ain't going to be missing. Behold, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I will raise up for Dawood a righteous branch. Hmm? I'm going to raise him up. And he shall be a reign as king and deal wisely. So he ain't going to be like Ahaz. He ain't going to be like his son. He ain't going to be like going after the year of born. He said, he ain't going to deal wisely. I'm going to raise him a righteous branch. He's going to deal wisely. Amazingly, Yahshua did say that. He said, my servant shall do, act, deal wisely. He shall be exalted and very high and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And in the days of, of Yehuda, and in his days, Yehuda will be saved and Yahshua will dwell securely. So he's going to save Solomon both. 
Yehuda and Yahshua are going to dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will, he will be called. Yahuwah is our righteousness. Oh, you mean Yahuwah is our righteousness? Or, you know, he's going to be the Malak of righteousness. He's going to be Malak Sadiq. He's going to be what they call Melchizedek. Malak Sadiq, Yahuwah, our righteousness. It says, woe to, it says, woe to the shepherds who destroy. That word for destroy is abide with an olive. Remember we've talked about, he said, the day you worship these idols, that word for destroy, woe to the shepherds who destroy, that he said, the day you worship these idols, you shall surely perish. Because you forgot about Yahuwah, your Allahim. And these shepherds and led you away because he never, remember, in Dabrian chapter 8, he never told them about eating no animals and, and when he get to the land and killing no animals eating flesh. He was only talking about eating the pomegranates, the apples, the, the, the fruits of the vineyard. He talked about tilling the land, taking care of the animals, right? The water, the pure water, the river. He said, you're going to eat bread in plenty. He ain't never talked about none of this stuff that people eat in a day. He said, them shepherds, he said, man, the only way you reason you eating them animals and eating those animal flesh and destroying these creatures and eating it is because you worship in idols. You worship the host of the Shamayim. And guess what happens after that? Woe to the shepherds who abide or destroy, perish, allow them to go astray to perish and die because a lot of people are eating these things. He said, doing the things opposite what Yahuwah said and they dying. He said, who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares Yahuwah. They scatter them to wander away. To be lost, to be annihilated. People saying, why? To wander away. They don't even care. To lose oneself. To perish. He, probably, he, he said, when the day when I brought, I ain't telling about an animal flesh. When I call, he said, out of Mizraim, I called my son Yahushua. Oh, let me guess. Yahushua eat animals and kill animal flesh. No, I ain't. Yahushua knew what he'd do. He already knew. People saying, why he was on a mission from the time he was like 12, all the way up until he was 33 years old. But he was not playing around. I know people think he was, but he was he wasn't. He said, which Elohim you going to serve? Because that's the good shepherd. Because you know how you know he's the good shepherd? This Aramaic Targums, he said, well, he said, you, you call my people to Abad. This Aramaic Targums, Vagish, section 6. And Yusuf said to his brethren in his father's house, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and say to him, my brother and my father's house from the, from the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are pastors of sheep they are. He said, I'm going to give you pastors according to my, my, my heart. And they're going to be one, they're going to be only one fold and one shepherd, right? He said, he's going to raise up a righteous branch. And the men, these men are pastors. For they are men, because you know there are men and women among them, because you got recall among them, right? You got all the other shepherds among them, right? So it ain't just men. It says what? He says, for they are men, the masters of flocks. Rebecca was a master of camels. So is Recall. Ian Zilpah. Right? All these other people, right? Just like, just like Abraham, you second your code. And the 12 sons. He said, they what? They, he said, they are masters of flocks. And their sheep and their oxen and all which they have. they masters of all of it. You mean they have authority and dominion over the fowls of the earth, of the Daga on the Ramiz and the Bahima, just like the beginning. They are, they are just like the beginning. He said, people say they don't want to, he said, why people don't want to delight in understanding? These people were in, in tune. He said, they have brought. It says, it says, it says, and it says, and it must be, it must be when Pharaoh calls you and say, say, tell me what is your work. You must say, Thy servants have been masters of flocks from our youth until now. And people saying, why are you saying homie yourself like a child? He said, you ain't going to get it. You're not going to enter the kingdom of Yahuwah. Because goodness and mercy are going to follow you, me all the days of my life. He said, they rod and stab, but they're going to comfort me. He said, you, they've been masters of flocks from our youth up until now. He said, we're masters of flocks. Matthew Yahu. 11, 25 through 29. It says, and at that time, Yahushua declared, I thank you, Av, of the down and Shamayim and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Little children. 
He said, we've been, we've been masters of flock from our youth up. He gave it to little kids. He's like, man, you wicked child. You was just a little kid. You a babe. You know how they say? You a babe in Mashiach. Verse 26, yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. <laughs> for, kid, for children to understand it. All things have been handed over to me from my, by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So he's saying, all right, if nobody revealed it to you, you just automatically just know it. Who did that? You who did it? Because you who is the shepherd? He said, how do you know you who is the shepherd? He said, come to me all who are, 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 come to me all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, all, we mean, he going to make you lie on green pastures. He going to make you find rest. Because he your shepherd. He said, I'm going to give you rest in green pastures. Isn't that what he said you're going to do in the land when he brought him to the land? He said, I'm going to bring you bring you to the land. It's going to be flowing with rivers and streams. And I'm going to give you all the plants and the pomegranates. And you're going to eat bread to his food. Verse 29, he said, take your yoke upon you and learn from me. Because he the good shepherd. He, Yahuwah, he said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. Get what he says. For I am gentle and lowly. Oh, you mean I'm conceived in Ta'u. I'm kind. I'm compassionate. I'm mercy. I'm merciful. And you will find rest for your souls. Or you mean you will find green pasture. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's light. Because you, all you're going to see is ore in light. This is Ukenon 10, 7 through 10. 7 through 30, or 7 through, yeah, 7 through 18 on this one. It says, tell Yahushua, but it's 7 through 30, 7 through 30. So Yahushua said to them, said, for, so Yahushua again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Huh? All who came, because remember, he said he's going to bring you in the house. That's what Abayith was. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. So all, this, all of the, all of the doors and anybody who ever came before, or the generations, they said they all thieves and robbers. That's everybody. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And I will go in and out, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And then what he said, woe to the shepherds who destroy my sheep, or you may cause them to worship idols. Abide. The day you do it, you shall abide, abide. You shall surely perish. They killed and destroyed them. They scattered them. You cause them to worship the sun, moon, stars, and the host of the Shamaim. You cause them, you cause them to eat animal flesh. You cause them to do all this other stuff that I never commanded them to do. I told them to do this, but you told them to do that. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly, be fruitful and multiply. I am the good shepherd. Oh, you mean the good one. Goodness and mercy to follow all the days of his life. He said, I am the good shepherd. Just like he said every day, from the first day to the seventh day, he said, and who all he said it, it was good. 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 And it was good. And then he sent the good shepherd with him. Taub shepherd. The good shepherd laid on his life for the sheep. He said, I'm going to raise up a righteous branch. And he's going to do it wisely. Verse two, 12 says, He who, who is a hired hand is not a shepherd. Who does not, who does not own the sheep. Who owns the sheep? Who is the shepherd? He said, I'm going to hire some people. They're keepers. They don't own it. He said, see the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. That's not what Dawood did. Dawood went out there after him. He went after them, the things that take it. He said, that wolf snatches them and scatters them. You know what the, the, the shepherds do? They call them to worship the sun, moon, stars, and idols and do things opposite. And make make idols and images. And he scatters them. He said they destroy her. They, they send demons. And he says he flees because he is a higher hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know my father, the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. 
and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my, my voice. My voice. He said, when they were in the, in the wilderness, they despised his voice. He said, they're going to listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. He said, I'm going to give you a ra'a after my own heart. There's only going to be one. There's only going to be one flock. There's only going to be one shepherd and one flock. And that one shepherd is Yahushua Mashiach. And that flock is everybody else. Even the higher people that's under him. Y'all just a bunch of higher ones. You are not the good shepherd. And you are not him. How you say it? How you say it? You are the only a hired person to keep sheep. That's it. You are not the shepherd. He said, woe to you shepherd who scattered my flock and caused the people to worship idols. He said, why are you talking about idols? Because ain't going to be more. He said, he said, you got to tell them. He said, verse 17, for this reason the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up again. This charge I received of my father. Right? Verse 19. There was again a division among the Yahudim because of these words. <laughs> because they didn't understand what he was saying. Why? Because they were worshiping idols. They already turned away from all of them. Remember, remember, they all went away from Yahuwah and worshiped idols in the sun, moon, and stars. And the constellations, and the kings, and the hundred star, and Caesar. They worshiping Caesar. They already were doing it because of these words. Notice they, they're talking about words. They ain't talking about him. They're talking about what he said. Many of them said, he has a demon. He is insane. Why well, listen to him? Others said, these are the words of one who is oppressed by a demon. <laughs> How is he oppressed by a demon by telling them that Yahuwah is your shepherd? Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? And at that time, the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Yahushua was walking in the temple of the colony of Shaluma. And so the Yahudim gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are Mashiach, tell us plainly. Answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. So just, like, just because somebody telling somebody something don't mean they're going to believe it. Just like stubborn Yasharal does, they turn their back. He said, they come to you as your people. They hear your word. They ain't going to do it. It's the same thing. They're not going to do anything you say. He said, they pretend. They show much love with their mouth, but their heart is far from him. He said, the, the works that I do in my father's name bear witness about me. People say, nobody's doing anything. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will... They will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father has given them to me. It's greater than all, and no one will be able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Yahuwah is my shepherd. Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack. He's making me lie on the green pastures, leading me beside the waters, and he restored my soul. He restored my soul back to the beginning. Luke 9, 12, 27 to 33. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour? But for this purpose, I came to this hour. It's an appointed time. There's an age for everything. And we're in an age where one has to make a decision on who you're going to follow. Either the host of the Shamaim and the gods of the earth and all the other beings on the earth, or you're going to serve Yahuwah and you're going to follow Yahushua Mashiach. It's, the, it's really that simple. He says, I will kabot your name. Then a voice came from Shalim, I kabot it and I will do it again. The crowd that stood by there heard it and said, it had thunder. Others said, a malach had spoken to him. Yahushua answered, this voice came for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the rulers of this world be cast out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said, I'm going to lift up a righteous branch. And he shall deal wisely. He's going to come from, da from Dao's lineage. David. Yeah, he, and he said this to show what kind of death he was going to die. Because he got to die. Why? Because they destroyed all the shepherds. The shepherds and destroyed all the sheep and scattered them. He got to scatter, scatter all the sheep. All of the lambs. All of the ox. They scattered all the donkeys. They ain't in the middle of the sheepfold anymore. They scattered, they scattered all the other thorn, the female donkeys. 
They're not in the middle of the sheepfold anymore. They destroyed all the shepherdesses. They driven them away, just like the Midianite shepherds tried to drive, drive Zilpah away and all the, and the virgins that came to, to water, the, water, the, water the animals. He said, they done did it. He said, I got to die. I got to do it. All right, this is Matthew 12, 22 to 30. Then a demon oppressed man was blind and mute and was brought to him. And he healed him so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, can this man, can this be the son of Dawood? But when the, the Pharisees heard it, they said, it is only by Beelzebub, the demons, that this man cast out demons. That's the only reason they say it. You know why they say that? Because they worship Beelzebub. They worship Baal. They worship Asherah. They worship Dagon. They worship the hosts of the Shamayim. They worship Os Orion and Osiris. They worship these beings. They follow them. They ain't like, they're not like Adam and Kor, because they ain't no good in evil. It says, what? By whom do your sons cast them out? But he said right here, I'm sorry. They say, man, he cast out demons by Beelzebub, right? The prince of demons. That this man cast out demons, knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. So people want to dwell in the house, in the same house, and he's saying, You ain't in agreement. And guess what happened? It's nothing gonna happen, nothing gonna stand. Your house will crumble. You won't have any prosperity. Why? Because you bow down to other gods. It's the same way. You have bow down to Beelzebub, bow down to Dagon, bow down to female spirits. You bow down to goddesses. He said, you ain't gonna have no prosperity. He said, beware, you shall surely perish and y'all destroy you. That's what he said in Dabarim. And that's what's gonna happen to them. Because it's, it's, it's divided. One part Beelzebub, one part Yahuwah. That's how people's houses are in, their, in the inside of their body right now. They got one part Beelzebub, one part Yahuwah. One part Baal, one part Yahuwah. They got, they halt between, they between two opinions. They don't even know which one to believe in. One part host of the stars and the moon and the stars, one part Yahuwah. They still got idols in their heart. Verse 26, that if Satan, Satanon, cast out Satanon, he is king, he is divided against himself. Because you know, when the sons of Alain came to appear before Yahuwah, Satanon came to him. He there too. If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do you cast them out? He said, that's what he said. Many are going to come to me that day and say, Adon, Adon, didn't we do wonderful works in your name? Cast out demons in your name? Doing all these things? He's like, I never knew you because you did it by Beelzebub. You did it by demons. You did it by Ashton and Dagon. People are saying, that's why people use all, you go to these doctors and these people and they cast these spells on you and then they give you a spell to get it out of you. And amazingly, that's what the teachings of the fallen do. They give you a spell and they cast a spell on you, enchantments, and then they give you, they have another demon, Malachi, to get the spell out of you. And that'd be the pharmacy. And that's what they do. That's the same thing they do. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. He said, let them demons be your judges. They judge you, they'll judge you good, better than what, what I'll do. 28 says, but if it be by the Ruach of Elohim that I cast you cast out demons, then the kingdom of Yahuwah has come upon you, these Shadim. How you say, mammon, money, greed, gluttony, late, how you say, Bel Gregor, they call it. That's sluggishness, lazy, that's what, that's what Bel Gregor is, procrastination. All these, they call them the seven deadly sins. If you've amazing, they call them the seven deadly sins. And we got seven day feasts to eat unleavened bread. Ain't that crazy, right? It says, in verse 29, it says, Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless his first bind the strong man? Huh? They're going to enter your house. Oh, that's, isn't that Passat? You supposed to have the blood on the doorpost, on the house, on the threshing floor, inside, inside, been thin without. But how he gonna enter into the house if you got the blood of Mashiach? Oh, you don't have the blood of Mashiach on the side of the house. That means the destroyer 
is coming to destroy you. Or how can someone enter the strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first bind the strong man? Then indeed, he may plunder his house. He may destroy the body. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Oh, you mean they scatter people to worship demons and idols? He said, woe to you shepherds who destroy and scatter my flock. He said, I'm going to visit upon the evil of your deeds. Why do you think them people are like that? They talking about Beelzebub, he cast out demons, he do all this. Because their leaders told him to do it. Their leaders taught them that. Their leaders taught them that. Their shepherds taught them to do that. And that's what you see on, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook today. Their shepherds taught them to do that. They hate him. They hate, they hate him without, they hate people just for no reason. Just because he said it. Satan all. All right, this is Matthew 36, 40. This is Matthew, I think it's 12. It says, Then Yahushua went with them to the place of Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I, I go over there and pray. And taking with him Koph and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said, My soul is very sorrowful, even, on, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Oh, you mean he made us lie down in the green pasture? He found them sleeping. He said, He made us lie down in the green pasture. He said to cough, So could you not watch me for one hour? Watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Watch and pray that you do not enter into intercourse with Satan. He says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because that's the whole point. He said, how you know you're walking out the flesh? When people don't got control of they walking out the ruach, because you ain't got control of your flesh. He said, the flesh rule. Again, the second time, huh? he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping. He making me lie on a green pasture. For their eyes were heavy, heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, sleep, on, sleep and take your rest, huh? Later on. You make you lie on green pastures. See, he says, see, the hour is at hand. And the son of Adam is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise up, rise, and let's be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. All right, this is Matthew 20, 26, 30 to 35. When they had sung a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. And when Yahushua told them, this, this very night you will fall away on the account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Yahuwah is your shepherd. He said, why do you want to kill Yahushua? So he can scatter the flock? Because these, these guys need more idol worship. Verse 32, but after I have risen, I, I will go ahead into Galilee. Kaf replied, even if, even if all fall away on, your, on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Yahushua answered, this very night. You, the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. But Kaf declared, even if I have died, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Amazingly, when you worship the sun, moon, and stars, the great hunter, amazingly, you look at all these gods that the people serve. These are the same gods these people serve today. Or have served. Or still do it. He said, he denied me three times. He said, they'll deny you for Orion. But even if they deny you for Orion, he said, they'll deny you just like Shem, Ham, and Yephah.
Verse 69, now Kaf was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Yahushua of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you are talking about, he said. So these are people saying, why? Remember, this man, Yahushua, is not a higher hand. These ain't, this ain't like these shepherds today. Because remember, all these shepherds scattered the flock. They done did all that already. This ain't Yahushua today. These, these people come, oh, people think they come from righteousness, they don't. He says, but he did not it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people, said to the people there, this fellow was with Yahushua of Nazareth. If you really were Yahushua of Nazareth, I assure you, ain't nobody, they're gonna be saying you. And he said, he denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. They swore it. After a little while, those standing there went up to Cobb and said to him, Surely you are one of them. Your ascent gives you away, your accent. Because when you become his image and likeness, you start talking like him. That's why when people follow shepherds on earth, he said, Guess what he said? You, you exchange the image of Yahuwah for mortal men. You know, he said, You know, when you start talking like him, he said, You speak just like him. You talk just like him. He said, your, your accent gives you, gives you away. He said, after a little while, those standing there went up to Kaf and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, the rooster crowed, and Kaf remembered the word of Yahushua Mashiach had spoken. Before the rooster crowed, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. He said, here, it, was, it was a reminder, but here we go. This is Matthew 27, 27 through 43. The governor's headquarters, they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put on a scarlet robe on him and twisting a crown of thorns. They, they say they put it on his head and the reed in the right hand. Why? And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, Malachi the Yahudim. Because he said, Man, God, oh, faithless Yashara, and Yahuda more treacherous than them. He said, Man, they go speak to. Go speak, go speak to the north. And they spit on him and, and they put a reed in it. And it, they put a reed and struck him in the head. They took the reed and struck him in the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him and his robe and put on his own clothes and let him away to crucify him. And as they went, they found a man of Cyrene by name and compelled him to carry his cross. When they came to the place called Golgotha, which means a place of skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. And then when they tasted it, he would not drink it. They had crucified him. They divided his garments among them and casting lots. And they sat down and kept watch over him. There, and one and over his head they put it, the charge against him, which read, "This is Yahusha, the Malachi, the Yahudim." And the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, and saying, "You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of Yahuwah." Come down from the cross. Amazingly, in Dude Dabarine chapter 8, he told him something. He said, Beware, lest you forget you who you are. He said, My power and my might got me this well. And you bow down and you worship these idols. Amazingly, they sitting down. Because everyone dressed it up. They took off his clothes and put it on and put a reed in his hand and they mocked him. They didn't want to dress it up. They had crude joking, how you say? They're the one did it. He said, guess what, if you do that, he said, I'll tell you this day, you shall surely perish. You're going to surely perish. How you say? Abad, abad. Aleph, baith, dalif. Amazing, you should say, I'm the door of the sheep. The olive is strength, the house, he said, strength of the house and the door. I'm the strength of the house and the door. He said, anybody come in through me, they shall be saved. Abad with an olive. Not an iron. He said, you shall surely perish. And it says, wagging your heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of Yahuwah, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him, saying, he saves others, he cannot save himself. If he is the Malachi Yasharal, because huh? he got to be the Malachi Yasharal, oh, treacherous Yasharal, and, oh, faithless Yasharal, and treacherous, treacherous Yehuda. He say both of them 
just as wicked. Because he himself, he trusts in Elohim. Let Elohim deliver him now if he desires him. But he said, don't say in your heart that it's because of your righteousness I brought you up. It ain't because of your righteousness. Y'all say, I lost Beelzebub. You all said, I cast out. You say, I got demons and demons. You say, I got, you say, I do things about Beelzebub. He said, it ain't because of your righteousness that I brought you up. Y'all worship, you worship idols and you make them on, on top of groves. You think your, your power and your might got you this well. It ain't because of y'all righteousness that I brought you up. You may ask them, you, you call your, you, matter of fact, you call your children, you put your children through the fire. Isn't that what they're doing to Yahushua right here? You sacrifice your children. Isn't that what they're doing right here? He said, until the child is born, until the son is given, and the government is going to be upon the shoulders. Just like we read in, in, second, just like we read in the book of Kings. He said, you, you call your children to go through the fire. Isn't that what they're doing right here? He said, it ain't because of your righteousness I brought you out. Surely you know that. Verse 43 says, he trusted Elohim, let Elohim, Yahuwah, deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of Yahuwah. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. They did the same thing. Now from the sixth hour, this is Matthew 27, 45 to 56. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice, saying, Aliyah, Aliyah, Zama Sabbathana, is my Elohim, my Elohim, why has thou forsaken me? Because they forsook you. You will. They turned their back. He said, beware, lest you forget me. And you go worship other gods. He said, the day you do it, you're going to surely perish. A bar to bar. And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man calling for all y'all. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put a reed in his right. He said, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let's see whether all y'all will come and save him. And you should cry out again and you the rule off. The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. The day you worship these idols, you shall abide a bar. Why do you think he dying right here? Why do you think he did it twice? Why do you think he cried out twice? A bar to bar. He had to cry out twice. You shall surely perish because they worship idols. And they still, they worship idols still while he dying. They still worshiping idols. They still worship other gods, still worshiping the host of Shamaim. They still got false shepherds and lying shepherds who scattered the flock and got them worshiping idols. They still have it. Because that's what happens after, they, after he killed them. They got, they got, destroyed, they got dis dispersed out of their city. Verse 51 says, And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, and the top to the bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks split. The tombs also were open, and many of the bodies of the Kadashim of the saints were falling asleep, were raised, coming out of the tombs of the resurrection into the Gudash city, and appeared to many. When Centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch of Yahushua, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the son of Yahuwah. He mean truly, he was a good shepherd. This is the good shepherd. Are you looking now 1928? And after this, Yahushua, knowing all that was now finished to fill the scripture out of thirst, a jar of leaven stood there. So they put a sponge and full of sour wine, I mean leaven, on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. And when Yahushua had received the leaven, he said, it is finished. And he, behold, he gave up the Ruah. Pharisees 2 and 1. Thus the Shamayans and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And the seventh day, Yahuwah Elohim finished all his work that he had done and rested on Shabbat, the seventh day. That's the day. For all this, for all his work that he had done. So Elohim Barak the seventh day, made a kudash, because on it, Yahuwah rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is Yukonah 1931. 1931. Amazingly, he rested from all his work. Just like he said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me find rest. Why do you think Yahuwah, Yahuwah is his shepherd? He found rest for his soul. That's what happened to him at the end. Yahuwah is his shepherd. That's why he said, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thine will, because Yahuwah is his shepherd. He said, what? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Because Yahuwah was his shepherd. What else did he do? He said, I, he said, I rod and I staff, they comfort me. Why do you think they beat him in the head with a reed? He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of this life. Everybody forsook him. And I will dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever.
Huguenot 1931. Since it was a day of preparation so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Shabbat, for that was a Shabbat Ahad day because Yahushua died in between the sons before the, before the Shabbat even came in, which was the first day of 11 bread. And the Yahudim asked Pilate that their legs might not be broken and that they might, might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Yahushua, they saw that he was dead or already dead, and they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced it in his side with a spear, and at once came blood and water. And he who saw it bore witness, his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth, that you may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they pierced. And after these things, Yahushua of Manimathea, who was a disciple of Yahushua, but secretly from fear of the Yahudim, asked Pilate that he might take away his body of Yahushua. And Pilate gave him permission, skipping down to verse 40. So they took the body of Yahushua and bound it in linen cloth with spices, as in the burial cloth of the Yahudim. Now in the place that there where he was crucified, there was a garden, just like it was in the beginning. And in the garden, a new tomb, which no one had never been laid, the virgin tomb. So you, because the Yahudim day of preparation was with the facade, it was because it was so because of the Yahudim preparation since preparation since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Yahushua there. Because they had to keep the Shabbat because he died in between the evenings before the first day of eleven bread came in. It's Luke Oriah 23, 50 through 56. Now there was a man of Yusuf, this is another account, but it says he, of the Yahudim, he was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, because goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, who had not consented to the decision and actions that he was looking, that he was looking for the kingdom of Yahuwah. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Yahushua, and then they took it down and wrapped it in linen shroud. And if you Malak Yasharal, let him come down. He had to. Because had he not come down, a lot of the Torah would not have been fulfilled. Verse 54 says, And it was the day of preparation, and the Shabbat was beginning, because it was the first day of unleavened bread, because he was killed in between the sons. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared the spices and ointments on the Shabbat, they rested according to the commandment. Because it's the first day of 11 bread. Because remember, the Pesach was supposed to be taken in between the evenings. And that's what he did. He did it at night. And he was killed during that day. And then he died. And he was in, in the tomb before the first day of Shabbat. Or the first Shabbat. Or the first day of 11 bread. Because the first day you're supposed to have a Shabbat. A solemn assembly. That's what we did, right? This is Oriel 24, 1 through 9. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. So, so you look at the first day of the week, you look at that first day of the week according to a 364-day cycle, according to seven days a week. The, the Passover came on a day, uh, the Passat came on a day where you had, it came on the first day of the week, right? Just like you have a calendar or a time sequence, and it, it just happens on that day. It, it had nothing to do with what people think. And on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared, right? So, so, so he said, the first day of the week. And they found the stones rolled away from the tomb. Because he said, just like the son of Adam, the unit was three days and three nights in the heart, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, so shall the son of man be three, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Or he said, in the whale's belly, so shall the son of Adam be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So what happens out of three days and three nights? The fourth day. What today is? Today is the fourth day. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Adon Yahushua. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. But he has risen. 
because it was dawning. You know, how you say early dawn? You know, when the sun rises out of the horizon, that's early in the morning. When the sun is coming out of the horizon. If people ever get up at the golden hour, but that's a whole other subject. And he is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he, he told you while he was in Galilee that, he, that the son of Adam must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and rise up, and on the third day rise. He had to rise on the third day. He was already gone. It was dawning toward the, it was dawning toward the fourth day. Well, it was, it was, it's the third day since he was risen, right? So it's coming into the fourth, coming into, like I said, this is the third day since that happened. Sorry. This is the third day since that happened. Verse 8 says, and they remember his words, and returning from, from the tomb, they told all the things to the eleven and to all the rest, right? So you, he died on the, he died of a sock in between his sons on the 14th day before the, the time of him to take the Shabbat, take, do the Pesach, and the first day of eleven bread came in. So you had to take it between the sun. You had to do Pesach between the sun. You had to do it at night. But he had to do it in haste. And then, what did he do? By the time the sun went down for the first Shabbat, or the first day of Shabbat, which is the Shabbat, or the first day, he was already, they had to take him down from the cross and put him in the tomb. And he was in the tomb for three days. He was in there for three days. He had to be there for three days. Why? He had to. Those are the first three days of creation. And what happened on the third day of creation? He said he caused all the, the, the herb yielding seed and all the tree with seed in itself to sprout forth. That's the third day. We're on the fourth day. Let's see what happened. And they remembered his words, and returning to the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to the rest. Right, this Oriah, Luke Oriah 24, 13 through 35. That very day, two of them were going to the village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Yahushua himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this, this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, and they stood still, and they stood still, he leave me beside the still waters. And they stood still looking sad. Because he said, my people going to follow me, going to be happy, going to be joyful. They're going to be beautiful people. But they stood still and they were sad. He said, they stood still and were sad. Then one of them named Cleophas answered them, are you, the, are you only a visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days, these first three days of, the, of unleavened bread? I guess a lot of people don't. Men and women don't. You say, why? Because they ain't joyful. They ain't, they ain't happy. Why? Because they don't, they don't actually see it as something that's their salvation. They don't see you who is their shepherd. He said, does he not know these, the things that have happened these three days? And he said to them, what things? And they said to, said to him, concerning Yahushua of Nazareth, a man, a nabi, mighty indeed, in word before Yahuwah and all the people, and how the, the chief priests and the rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that it would, was the one who redeemed Yasharal, Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have happened. It's the third day. Moreover, so we know this is the third day, right? We're on the fourth day. Let's see what happened. Moreover, some women of the company amazed us, and they were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, because the sun just now rose, they came back saying that they had seen, they had even seen a vision of Malachim who said that he was alive. Some of them, he said, some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the Nabiim has spoken. Was it not necessary that Mashiach should suffer these things and to enter into his kabod and begin at Mashiach and all the Nabi'im, he interpreted to them the scriptures concerning himself. So you see, Yahushua, this is the third day since it happened. 
Because remember, it go evening, morning, evening, morning, evening, morning. Early in the morning, when the sun was rising on the third day, he was gone at night. And he rode, and guess what? It's the daytime now of the third day. The sun is now coming out of the horizon. It's the third day. And he's already risen. He's already risen. But he was, he was describing his things concerning himself. Verse 28 says, So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent, which means now they're going to what day? The fourth day, which is today. right? Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them and when he had and when he was at the table with them he took bread and barak it why because it's still the same feast of eleven bread it's still the same feast of eleven bread kogmatsa and broke it and gave it to them so he's still keeping the feast and their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished out of their sight so the only way you're going to recognize Yahuwah and his son Yahushua you have to keep kogmatsa the way you need to. How you gonna recognize him without it? Ha, because you who is your shepherd? He I have no lack. And they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by on the road? While he opened us the scriptures? He says, and they arose the same hour and remained in Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and those who were with, with them and gathered together, saying, The Master has risen indeed and has appeared to Shimon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them by breaking bread, unleavened bread. He was known to them by breaking kog matzah. And why was he breaking kog matzah with them? Because it's a day, it's a memorial, it's a day of remembrance that you may know that you don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of your whore. Some people are like, if I don't eat no bread, I'm going to die. But guess what? If you don't eat the, he said, eat the bar of your whore, you're going to die. Right? But it said right here, this is Luke 9, 20, 11 through 28. But the Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and she, and as she wept, she stood and looked into the tomb. And she saw two Malachim in white sitting there where the body of Yahushua had lain. One had a head and one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my master, and, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Yahushua standing, but she did not know it was Yahushua. Yahushua said to the woman to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing that he was the gardener. She said to him, Sir, you have carried you, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And we should say to him, said to her, Mary. She she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. You should say to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my Allahim. In your Allahim. People say, I don't want to say you who is my father. You scared? Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples. She went to go told them. And I have seen the master. And that he said these things to her. So he told her to go tell him. And on the evening on that day, on the first day of the week, if it's going to our evening, it's going to the fourth day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Feed Kach Matzah. Right, that was last night. Well, here we go. We're in the daytime. It says, the door is being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Yahudim. So they were scared they were coming in the door at night because they're still trying to get to them. Because they refused to him. And Yusha came and stood among them and said to them, Shalom, be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them in his, his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the master. And he said to them, Shalom be to you. And as their father has sent me, even so I am sending you. 
And when they, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the kudosh ruach. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you withhold forgiveness from them, it is withheld. He breathed on them, just like Adam. Oh, you mean he restores my soul. He was my shepherd. He restored my nefash. He turned my nefash back. He breathed into their nostrils and the man became a living soul. That's the same thing he did in the beginning with Adam. Because Yahuwah is my shepherd. If he your shepherd. He said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. Right now, Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was with them. And when Yahushua came, so the other, other disciples told him. He said, we have seen the master. This, remember, this is the evening time. On the fourth day, because it's evening, morning, evening, morning, right? That's how it is. Right? But it said right here, but he, remember, remember all the things that he showed them. But it said right there, it said right here, remember when it happened? Third day, three days later, these things happened. It was dawning toward evening, and he revealed himself to them, and he showed them their hands on their side, and guess what happened to them? They believed, and that was the fourth day. And it was evening time. But Thomas was late. They believed on the fourth day. And it was unleavened bread, kog matzah. Now let's see what happened. Because you know how it is. Everybody don't want to believe. And it says right here, now Thomas, one of the 12, called the twin, was not with them when Yahushua came. So he wasn't there on the fourth day. He wasn't there on the fourth day. Because you know what happened on the fourth day. Let there be lights in the firmament. Let there be lights in the firmament. The greater light, the rule of day, Ma'or, Gadol, Ma'or. Ma'or, Gadol, Mim, Shalom. And the lesser light, the rule of night. Gadol, Ma'or, Mim, Shalom. Right? That's what happened on the fourth day when he showed him his hands in the sun, when he showed it to him. And it says, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the master. And he said to them, unless I see his hands and the marks in his nails and place my finger into the marks of, it, of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again, were inside again. So this is after unleavened bread, Kog Matzah. Remember, it happened on the fourth day when he did that. Because this is after the fourth day. So you, got, you count three days. Right? This is after the fourth day. And it says, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Yahushua came and stood among them and said, Shalom be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger in me here and see my hands and put, your, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And this is after unleavened bread. Thomas answered him, my master, my Allahim. He's basically saying, Thomas answered him after he did that, my master. Because what did he tell Yashro? He said, return to me, Yashro, for I am your master. I am your master. So he's telling them to return to him. I am your master. Who was that master before? The sun, the moon, the stars, the host of the Shamayim. They were still worshiping idols. But to not believe in Yahushua Mashiach, is to be worshiping idols, to worshiping other gods. He said, my master, my Elohim, why would he say that? Yahuwah is my shepherd. Yahuwah is my shepherd. Yahushua said to, to him, have you believed because you have seen me? I haven't seen you, Yahushua. Barak are those who have not seen but yet believe. You, have, you still believe and you ain't seen it yet? He said, Barak are you? Because if you... If you, he said, if you, don't, if you need to see it to believe it, then you just like, you doubt. He said, you got little Amuna. He said, you got little Amuna. This is Yuka 9, 14, 1 through 14. Let your heart, not your hearts be troubled. Believe in Yahuwah, believe also in me. If you, in my Father's house are many rooms. If I would not so, I, I would not, he said, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And you know where I am going. Thomas said to him, 
Master, we do not know where you are going. Same person. How can you how, how can we know the way? Yahushua said to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I'm the I'm the Amoth, and I'm the Kai. Isn't that what he said I want to do? He made me lie on green pastures, leave me to the still waters, he restored my soul. He bring he made me repent, go back to how it was. He restored my nafash. I give you life. I'm the a moth. That rod and I staff, they cover me. I am the way. I lead the way. I am the moth, and I give you life. I am your shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd laid on his life for the sheep. He laid on his life for the ox, for the donkey. No one, he said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Nobody comes through the door unless you come through the door. If you had known me, because he's a master shepherd, because shepherds, just like the sons of Yusuf, they were master shepherds. When they had, they understood how they, nobody had a door that animals come through. When the animals come through, right? And he says, I, he says right here, no one can come to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do not know him. He says, from now on, you know, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father. And it is enough for us. Yahushua said to him, Have you been with me long, so long, and you do not know me? And you did not, and he said, you still do not know me? Right, people, they, they around him, and they still don't even know who he was. Philip's, Philip, he said, you don't know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why? Because he said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. Yahushua said, I am my father, I want. I am the good shepherd. I am my father, I want. I came from my father, and he sent me to be your shepherd. And guess what? Your, I am Yahuwah himself. I am your shepherd. He said, how can you say, show us the father? He said, you see me, you see the father. Why are you saying, show us the father? He said, do you not believe that I am in the father and the father in me? The words that I say unto you, I do not speak on my own authority, but what the father who dwells in me does to his work. Believe me that I am in the father and the father in me, or else believe on the account of the works themselves. Truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to my Father. Whoever, whatsoever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be cabold in the Son, glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. All right, this is this Kav 20 through 25. For what credit is it when you when you sin, you are beaten for it? And he said, my son, do not despise the chastening of Yahuwah. All the way from the beginning. Why? Because Yahuwah is my shepherd. I have no lack. He said, do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make sure of your path. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahuwah. He said, Barak is the one who gives his back to Yahuwah. He said, he's going to be purified. He said, he's going to be purified. He said, he said, what credit is it when you sin, you are beaten for it, you endure it. But if you do not, but it, but but if you do, you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is gracious thing in the sight of Yahuwah. When you do good and you suffer for it, he said, when you evil, you don't get beat for that. But don't despise Yahuwah's discipline, even if, if you do good or evil. For to this you have been called, because Mashiach also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow his steps. And he got beat for all good stuff and your evil stuff. He said, everybody evil stuff and your good, evil and the good, I got beat for. Who, he committed no sin, no kata, no kata, no sinner. He went and hated his father, neither the seat was found in his mouth. He had the spirit of the seat. When he was reviled, he reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, because he is going to be he said, what is going to be his name, as, as he read in Jeremiah chapter 3? He said, Yahuwah, our righteousness. But his, by his wounds we are healed. For you were straying like sheep. 
Oh, you mean you were like the, the shepherds who scattered the flock. You were the flock that was scattered by the shepherds who called you to worship idols and go after other gods. But you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your soul. Who's the shepherd and overseer of your soul? Yahushua Mashiach. Because he is a good shepherd. And then he said out there, it'd be one fold and one shepherd, one, one, one flock and one shepherd. He said, them are higher keepers, just like David did. Because when, when David left, he had left him the keepers to go fight Goliath. And that's why he left people here to tend to sheep and ox and, dunk, and a thone and donkeys, male and female, just like Nuak in the ark. Nuak had all the animals, both male and female, in the ark. He left all of them to keepers. He left Nuak and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Yephah, were keepers of sheep and flock and goat and, and animals. And he gave them food. That's the same thing Abraham and Yaakov's children were. He left them to you. He said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. I laid down my life for the sheep. He said, how do you know that? This is 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even, even though we once regarded Mashiach Yahushua according to the flesh. We regard him no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Mashiach, he is a new creation. The old has passed away because all things new has come. What do you mean he a new creation? He, he formed me a dumb. He a new creation. All, all this is from Yahuwah, who through Mashiach reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, Mashiach, that is, in, that is, in Mashiach, Allahim was reconciled, that is, in Mashiach, Yahuwah was reconciling the world to himself. So Yahuwah, in Yahushua, Mashiach, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Mashiach Yahushua, Allahim, making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Mashiach Yahushua, be reconciled to Yahuwah. So in order to be reconciled to Yahuwah, you got to be like just like it was in the beginning. You got to be just like it was in the beginning, all the way. You got to be like it was when he made Adam. That is the reconciliation. Because ever since then, everybody been worshiping the host of the Shamaim. And they ain't never did anything he told them to do after they left Mizraim. And even after Yahushua died and ascended, nobody has done it. So he's like being reconciled to Yahuwah. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of Yahuwah. Huh? Oh, you mean the righteousness of Yahuwah? He said, what's going to be his name? Yahuwah, our righteousness. He said, he's going to raise up a righteous branch and he's going to do it wisely. After they, after all, he get rid of all these shepherds who scattered his flock and got on worshiping idols. He said, "What? That we might become the righteousness of Yahuwah? Oh, you mean Malak? Oh, you mean Malak Sadi? Be under the, he said, the Malak Sadi. Or this Matthew twenty three and one. Then Yahushua said to the crowds and his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on most Mashal's seat." So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do, because they worship the host of the Shalayim. They don't clean the filth out of the house. They do all types of abominations. And he said what? See, he said, I'm keeping it for Kogmatsa, right? But I ain't doing what they do during Kogmatsa. He said, I'm doing everything they said, but I ain't doing nothing they do. For they preach and do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear. They make all these hard, you know how these are hard things you done heard? Man, I heard so many hard things. I'm like, man, what are y'all doing? You know, good well, you can't know them people can't do that. Or that person can't do that. And you don't even do it yourself. They be like, forsake all, follow me. Follow you, you ain't Yahushua Mashiach. Mashiach done died and rose and ascended. Now remember, he ain't died and rose and ascended yet. But watch, watch what he says. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear. And, they, and he lay them on people's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to move them with his, their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. Isn't that what people do today? For they make themselves phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They think it's clothes. Nah, if people do acts and deeds to be seen by men and they don't even 
they want to be seen so bad. They want to be known. And they love the place of honor at the feast and the best seats in the synagogues. They love to sit right there. They love it. A congregation, the Adah, what do you call it? This is back when during the time of Mashar. This is time back time when Yahushua was alive. And greetings in the marketplace and being called rabbi, or you say teacher by others. But you are not to be called teacher. Huh? This is he talking to Yahushua Mashiach, talking to the to the, to the Shalakim, who were going to sit on 12 thrones during the 12 trials of Yasharal. But you are not to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, huh? One teacher, or you mean one shepherd. And you are all brothers. Oh, you mean you are all brothers, like the, like the 12 sons of, of your code? You're all brothers. Just like the 12 sons of your code. You're all brothers. Because the 12 sons of your code have big families underneath their sons. Each son had a big family. And they had to rule their family. He said, you just like the sons of your code. And call no man father on earth. For you have one father who is in Shamaim. Neither be, in it, be called instructors. For you have one instructor, the Mashiach Yahushua. So if you, people still want to be called this today. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled. Oh, you mean he's going to suffer you to hunger. That you may know. He said, you're going to be humble. I'm going to take away everything you got. I'm going to take away things. He said, you exalt yourself, you will be humble. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. He said, you'll be exalted. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 10 through 13. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of the Master Yahushua, Mashiach, that all of you agree. And there be no divisions among you. That, you know why there's divisions? Because they call, everybody calls themselves teachers and instructors and all these things. He said, you only, he said, you only got one teacher. but that you are be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by closed people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Shaul, I follow Apollos, I follow Cephas. It says, I follow Mashiach. You know? He said, is Mashiach divided? Was Shaul crucified for you? Or were you immersed in the name of Paul? He's like, none of these people died for your sins. I ain't died for your sins. But all these are part of it. But he said there's only one fold and one shepherd. There's only one shepherd. And everybody else is just, how you say, family. It's just like any other descendants, when the 12, 12 sons pass down the information to their children, they're supposed to continually walk in the ways of their fathers. So when the Shalak King passed all the information down to the people, they're supposed to continue in what they said. Just like sons, just like the, just like the 12 tribes revealed it to their sons and their children, and then they kept it going. This Nazarene acts of the Shalak King, how demons get power with men. Therefore, demons, as we have just said, when once they are able, by means of opportunities, afforded them to convey themselves through base and evil actions into the bodies of men, women, and children, and they remain in them a long time through their own negligence, because they do not seek after what is profitable for their inner beings, because they worship in idols and the host of Shamayim. They necessarily compel them in the future to fulfill the desires of the demons that dwell inside of them. They're going to worship idols. The host of Shamayim, the, the demons, the idols are still in their heart. It's still in their heart to do it. They're going to follow after them. They're going to take over their body and have them doing all types of things, and they're going to think they're in righteousness. They're going to think they're walking in truth, and they're not. Because the demon taking over their body, making them hear, speak, and talk, and walk away. Says, but, but worst of all, at the end of the age, when the demon will be co signed the ageless fire of the necessity of the Ruach that obeyed them, will be tortured in the ageless fire together with this body it has polluted. Right? It's a polluted, the polluted one's natural consciousness, they mind. That's seen in the book of Yahushua, sevenfold of the people. Rock is a child of light, who is wise in mind. He shall create the Shamayim. 
The mind of the wise is a well-plowed field, which giveth forth abundance and plenty. For if thou showest a handful of seeds to a wise man or woman, why would it say wise man and woman? A handful of seeds. Because you are farmers. You are master farmer. You are master shepherds. That's what the sons of your cove were. They were shepherds and shepherdesses. They were masters of farming. He will see in his mind, I, field of golden wheat. If thou showest a handful of seeds to a fool, he will see only that which is before him and call them worthless pebbles because they are stale. They're lazy. He said, I still don't plow in autumn. They don't plow in autumn. In the harvest time, they don't got nothing to offer. He said, they ain't got nothing. As the field of the wise, man giveth forth grain in abundance, and the field of the fool is a harvest of stones. So it is with our thoughts. So he's got our harvesting from our consciousness, our mind, our thoughts. As the sheep of the golden wheat lies hidden within the tiny kernel, so the mouth of Shamayim is hidden within our thoughts. If they be filled with power and love and wisdom of the Malachim of, uh, Malachim of the Shamayim Father, so shall they carry us to the Shamayim Seat. But if they be stained with corruption and hatred and ignorance, they shall chain our feet with pain and suffering. No man can serve two masters. Neither can an evil thought abide in the mind filled with the light and the Torah. He who hath found shalom and peace with the mind have learned to soar beyond the realm of the Malachim. Know this shalom with thy heart. Fulfill this shalom with thy body. Because you're supposed to be unleavened for seven days. You're supposed to be unleavened in the body. But a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. A little leaven leaveth the whole lump, right? This is Allah, Sh Allah, Allah, Sh Allah, 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 you Allah, 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 you can see everything that Allah, said was from the beginning. He said, have no Allah before me. It was all from the beginning. When he said, I'm going to abide, I want you going to, I brought you out of the house of slavery from being a slave to Ham, Ham, those who were rebelled against Yahuwah from the Nimrud, all the way from the descendants of Cain, and the fallen, the teaching of the, not, of the not, and the fallen. He said, he only did that so you won't be a servant to them anymore, so you can come back and be a servant for me. And I'm going to bring you back into the land, and you're going to be master farmers and shepherds again, both male and female. And he's going to bring you to green pastures. And I'm going to give you rest. We labor to enter into that rest. But we're trying to make sure nobody comes short of it. That's Hebrew chapter 4 says, right? It says right here. If you would, if you heard, if, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, why do you think Yahuwah was bringing them out of Israel? So he can get it back in them. That's why he suffered them to hunger. To change their appetites. He's changing your diet. He's changing the way you live. Changing the way you think, changing the way you serve, changing the way you love, changing the way you show compassion, changing the way everything you do, changing the way you hear, changing the way you pay attention, changing the way you think, changing the way you see. Your old life, he says, is in Mizraim. But he says right here, abide in the, he says, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, in order to go back to the beginning, you got to get rid of everything. People saying, why? Because everything you learn is from Mizraim. He said from, he said Mizraim, Cush, Ham, all the way from Cain, the fallen, all that's from him. And all the fallen rebelling against Yahuwah. Everybody who learned their teaching rebelling against Yahuwah and they didn't want to keep the commandments that was, he gave Adam. They didn't want to do it. It says, and then you will too abide in the son and the father. You will be in the bin and the father. They will be your shepherd. Yahuwah is my shepherd. Yahuwah is my shepherd. And this is the, he said, and this is the promise he has made to us, eternal life. Well, how are they going to get the promise? He bled them to the wilderness for 40 years. It took 40 years to humble them, to bring them to Kana. They were in the Father and Son, but it took them 40 years to get them humble. He said, will it take you 40 years to get, get, get one humble? Will it take 40 years? Or would it be today? He said, today, the day you hear, harden not your heart. He said, today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of freedom. And also today is a day of warning, too. And it says, the Son and the Father. And this is the promise he has made to us, eternal life. I write these things about those who are trying to deceive you. Right, just like it was. 
during the time of the wilderness. Everybody's trying to deceive you because they're trying to say, that's not true. No, there's not only one shepherd. There's, there's only one teacher. There's only one shepherd. Everybody else are following the good shepherd. And when the, 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 how you say the flock is real big, so he hires people to help out. But not to help trying to tell the shepherd what to do and how people can live and eat and love and show compassion and what you can do. And now you're in trouble. Because Yahuwah gave commandment in the beginning and Yahushua haven't changed it. So I don't know what, if you're in his body, he said, I write these things about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. Why? Because you, Yahuwah is your shepherd. Yahushua Mashiach. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, people say, I don't want to be, you know why people can't be taught about everything? Teach about everything? Because all the idols and the gods got their mind. That's why they, he said, that's why they got their cup filled. They got their cup filled with news articles. They got their cup filled with who with who. They got their cup filled with P. Diddy. They got their cup filled with who with who or what's going to happen. They got their cup filled with all the things and the cares of this life. He said they, they got their cup filled with what they're going to do in the future, what plans they got. They think their power and their wealth got them what they got. They think they did it. They think they, they, think they, they made it all. They think that's my, I made my own money. I did it. I made it that way. No, that ain't yours. You would say, I brought you out of the land of Israel. I brought you out of that mindset of hum, of rebellion. But he said, as his anointing teaches you about everything, and it's true, and there's no lie, the only way it's going to be a lie, you got to be worshiping gods, idols. Just as it has taught you, abide in him. Because any man being Yahushua, he a new creation. And if you're a new creation and you and Yahushua, let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. Because in the beginning, Adam had a woman, and she came out from his side. Adam bore a woman. Yahuwah took, a, took from a man and made a woman from his same DNA code. He didn't have no other gods in his heart. But just like it says, he said, love what you heard from the beginning about in you. So we look at our heart and our mind, we look at our understanding, we look at that there's only one shepherd, Yahushua Mashiach. We got his only one shepherd. For in three days and three nights, he was in the heart of the earth. And on the fourth day, he revealed himself to the disciples and said, Mim Shalom. Let there be greater light and lesser light. My or, my or Mim Shalom. My or Mim Shalom. And let him rule over the day and the night. Mashal. And he did that on the fourth day of creation. This is the fourth day. Even as the sun get ready to go down and go to the fifth day, we now acknowledge the one on the fourth day who revealed to us who we are. But even as he told Yusuf, he said, I had a dream that I, my mother, your mother and, my, and the kuka, I, your mother and your brothers, going to bow down and worship you, knowing on the fourth day that all this kuka beam in the yard were created. And there was a light that was formed on the first day of creation. And he gave us life within. And all those who were willing to walk in his steps, guess what you have? You have the same behavior and understanding of he, that he had. And to walk even as it was in the beginning. Because the beginning is life. Walking in the beginning is life. Because the beginning is the end. And knowing that in the end, we all going to inherit eternal life if we continue to the end. Whether we suffer for good or evil, we take it patiently. Why? Because we know that Yahushua Mashiach endured our evil, and he, all he did was good. But he bore our wrong and our evil. For yea, though he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, he feared no evil, for Yahuwah was in him. And he was in the house. He said that his rod and his staff, they comfort him. And he said, I'll dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. And now he sits at the right hand of Yahuwah, sitting in his, at his right hand. And he will always be there. And all those who are in him will always be there too. Be there too and will dwell in him. For the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. 